Michael. What? I'm going to give you the credit. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I was saying your name because you're the one that ordered the pizza. I was trying to give you credit. Instead, I scared the shit out of you. All I just hear is mumble, mumble, mumble. Michael! God damn! What? (laughs) I didn't do it, I swear! Jump behind the couch, Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> oh sweet Jesus! Oh, wow. Can that be the intro? I mean, that's gonna be in there. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Camcast. Yay! The podcast that recently saw the Bodyguard the musical. The podcast that cares. Yep. I, I mean, the podcast that is cultured. <laughs> we're we're definitely there. Here we are. <laughs> uh, so. Dad went to go get more cigarettes, so we have a we have a bolo for him. Okay, I mean we'll we'll get him back here yet. And uh, Gavin is uh, enjoying the Foo Fighters concert as I'm, we record. I'm really glad to know that there are people out there fighting Foo. Yep, it's a good thing. So it's uh, me and Dave, and we are joined by Joey. Hello, hi Joey. I'm Dale Senior yet again. Damn right you are. <laughs> <laughs> He's Dale Senior. I am Doc Taste. <laughs> He's Uncle Radical, uh, uh, professor of the ghetto arts himself. Indeed. Currently clearing his throat into the microphone. Sorry. That's all right. Mr. It's, Hot Pink. It was yeah. only mostly disgusting. <laughs> Dad noises. <laughs> well, I mean, Dad's not here, so. Somebody's got to do it. Sorry. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, anyway... Well, we have uh, stuff and things to talk about and stuff to give away. Yay, stuff. Yes. And things. Which, we'll get to that whole giving away stuff in a minute. What's but... in the bag, Rick? Sorry, sorry, that was total Walking Dead throwback. My bad. Did they ever get out of the boxcar? Yes. Okay, good. I was worried. <laughs> that must be where you stopped. <laughs> That is where I stopped. I'm like two seasons past that, and I'm like three seasons behind. Yeah, the only I... thing I know about The Walking Dead is Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> that's well, it. Yeah, they, I mean, that's really all you need to know at this point. That's... Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. So. <laughs> Shout out to Norm. <laughs> Shout out to Norman Reedus and that funky little fetus. And I'll... <laughs> You can laugh out loud. Yeah. Okay. Just, so yeah, there's there's stuff and things going on. It's weird stuff and things going on. But we'll not bore you with that. Um <laughs> we totally will though. I mean if we really want to get into Death Stranding, we totally can. Jesus fucking Christ. So he finally had did an interview where he like he I'm sorry, this is going to turn into the video game podcast for five seconds, but he actually did talk about stuff that the game was actually about. <laughs> Finally, IGN got oh, out of him. Good. Mm. Well, all right. What yeah. is what did Hideo Kojima have to say? <clears throat> uh, well, Norman's uh, character's name is Sam. Okay. The water that he ends up in after he's dead is this weird, like, when you die in the game, you get transported to this weird, like, underwater world. <laughs> Upside down world that you can get back your items. The upside so down. So Australia. Yes. Sure. The face down <laughs> ass up. Yeah. And uh, uh, then you can come back. And I guess his whole thing is whatever's happened in the world, like let's say that like you <sighs> generate some yellow snow and then you die and then you come back from water world, your yellow snow will still be there. Hmm. So like instead of having to restart from the beginning... Gotcha. Having not right. killed whatever's on the level, so on and so forth. All Radical. right. Anyway, IGN interview. Go find it. Good to know. Um, yeah, well, we also have some other stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't been keeping up with the news lately because I've been in a panic to finish like Christmas shopping and all that stuff for you know the people who, on paper, love me. So, <laughs> the people who love you on paper. Yeah. Are they sending you IOUs? No, uh, it's one of those things that, on paper, they love me. In practice, you know, it's questionable. So they sent you a card. <laughs> we have yet to see what they've sent me. Okay, but, gotcha. Um, you always want to take the high ground, though. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, my girlfriend got me a couple pictures of herself. Play-Doh. 
Oh, oh so you know, that's love. That's, uh, yeah. She got me grow pills, like those little things that you what? throw in hot water. And oh, they... awesome. Yeah. Uh, she got me some awesome postcards. And uh, she also <laughs> made me a mix CD of theme songs of my favorite TV shows from when I was a kid into my adulthood. So one of them is the MASH theme song. No, you seem I like a MASH guy to me. Suicide is pain. I don't need her for to have suicide <laughs> is painless on, on my my stuff. But yes, I was a MASH kid. <laughs> my brother has the entire series on DVD. That was that was a reliable Christmas gift for the longest time. But no, it's like there's Transformers. There, there are. I asked for the theme to a Gundam Wing. There uh, are there are three mm-hmm. Gundam theme songs on there. None of which are Wing. Oh, uh, well, one, one close. Of, one of them is the original series theme song. So her ringtone is yes. the original Gundam. Yes. Like from 1979 theme song. Yeah, that's. And it's brilliant. It's amazing. Every time her phone rings, we're both Moyagare, 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 Gundamu. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, of the best. It's glorious. <laughs> but yeah, so that's. She, you know. That's what we've got, and then I've got other stuff for her, including stuff in this box behind Dave. But, hey. yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I've also been trying Quickly, to figure shout out, out loud whatever's in the box. No. <laughs> Although she doesn't listen, so it really doesn't matter, but still, don't. I don't need this getting back to her. I'm slowly getting into more places where her family could stumble across this. <laughs> nice. Uh, so There's a lot of... There's a lot of air packages in that box. Yeah. Amazon cares. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, I've been busy with all that stuff, so I haven't really come up with that great of an agenda or keeping up with news, per se. But um, the stuff that I have seen, there's been a ton of racing news coming out because we have uh, the IMSA Daytona test, and we had the PRI show this past weekend where we heard stuff. We heard a mm-hmm. Corvette or... We heard Callaway announce the drivers for their uh, World Challenge entry with their GT3 Corvettes. It's uh, Michael Cooper and uh, some German dude who actually won in those Corvettes in the ADAC Masters Series. Oh, but, okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, other World Challenge news. Uh, Radical, those crazy-ass British go-karts. Love those things. Yeah. And uh, Forza, at least. Uh, they're actually pretty awesome in real life. Yeah. Um, well, good news. Good news. The Dacia Sandero? No, the Radical North American Championship is partnering with Pirelli World Challenge. They will be a support series for World Challenge. Well, I mean, that's almost as cool as the Sandero, but I guess I'll take it. I mean, you're going to have to. Okay. God damn it. Just take what I'm giving you. <laughs> okay, all right. Jesus. Anyway, so they expanded from five rounds to six, and all six of those rounds are going to be run same weekend as Pirelli World Challenge stuff, including when they come to Utah in August. Oh, hey, cool. I'll take it. Yeah. So, so that's, we'll actually get to see some radicals doing radical things. It's been a while since we've actually had the radical series come through UMC, so that's going to be awesome. Mas excelente. Yep. In a world where racing series seem to be continuously condensing RIP, RMR, uh, uh, it's yeah. nice to hear some of some expansion. Yeah. So that's... Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sad news about RMR, but I mean... it's It's been... We knew it was coming. Yeah. Yet, That's okay. Yet another small oval goes the way of the evening newspaper and polio. Yeah, because nobody's really given a shit about the drag strip. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. that thing is, they've resurfaced it, like, I think three times since I've known about the place, and they still haven't fixed the dip 300 feet out in the right line. You know, the one that collects water? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> out of all the people in here that have gone down that course, it's probably you. Uh, yeah. yeah, the one time I drove that... Yeah. That uh, <laughs> well, that strip. It was in the right lane in the Integra. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks because every car I've ever owned, I've wanted to take it on the strip just to see what it'll do. And of yeah. course, now that I have something that might do something under an 18 second quarter mile, it's going away. Huh. Well, well, it's okay. It's the end of this season, so you can get a couple of crazy midnights in. You can get a couple. Go, go race the Volvo. Yeah, I got money on a, on like a 16.9. <laughs> Sixteen Ooh, uh, six to sixteen nine. Let's let's make it happen. Take that in the queue and have somebody. Boom! There it drive is. Drive one of the cars with me. D- Dibs Volvo. Dibs Volvo. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> you take the queue. I'll drive your Volvo. Cool. <laughs> Pizza's we'll on the way. The rats out of the queue. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. That was not fun to hear. Yeah, I don't know if I told you uh, that. No. <laughs> so, um, 
This is how I know this is new because the throttle body on it is well, it's a, <clears throat> it's a junkyard throttle body. But the point is that it's recently been installed, right? And I was under the hood the other day, and I looked down at the throttle body, and I had to get really close. I'm like, which I probably shouldn't have in hindsight, but I looked down. I'm like, are those little turds? Oh no, they're little tiny turds on the throttle body. Oh no, little shits. And I'm like, oh, I got rat. Oh. I mean, sec- it would explain the weird like electrical issues, but the secret oh, of Nim no. is playing out within your car. Yeah, oh, so. those little bastards! They 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 stole the linchpin. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> on the upside, I'm hoping that I take the throttle body off and I see you know bit wiring and be like, oh, that's my fucking problem. That that would be nice. Yeah, that would be kind of solve why I'm having the issues I'm having. Yeah, yeah. kind of a pain in the ass I'm gonna no. hunt these fuckers down. But well, I mean, you know. Teach. We all they have like our, coolant. We all have our cross to bear. Yeah. I found that out. <laughs> they like coolant. Okay. I left the Good rad cap off, the... off of uh, the the MGB. Oh yeah. And uh, the one that was eating all the wiring in the uh, engine bay of the MGB found his way into the radiator hole and uh, <laughs> mm. dr- drank himself some. Damn. So. I'll have to lead them. Onto the throttle body with a sticky trap. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, I've just dumped beer all over Zan's foot. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> She it enjoyed was, it. Sorry. It was bound to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just killed Dave. Dave is and, the brokenness. And that's how we know everything is right with the world. <laughs> well. <laughs> Whew, okay. All right. Well, well hi, hat, hat tip to you, madam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in more good news, Camille is on our on their way with our pizza. They'll be here in about four minutes. Awesome. It's not a girl's name. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> but it is though. <laughs> but it is. We should ask my buddy Tiffany. Oh, uh, he man. is a contractor, and he's Are the size of your the name couch you is sitting on. I'll take it. Go collect our pizza, Jared. I have four minutes. The all of two people that actually watch Gundam that probably listen to this podcast. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you get it, just drop us a line. Yeah, Mailbag please. at camautomag.com. I'll go buy you a high grade. Or or any of the uh, respective social medias. Yeah. At Cam Auto Mag. I'm staring at this Barbados box over here. Yeah, so I got that or at the... Or Barbados, however people want me to say I that. I don't know. So, yeah, at the last uh, Utah Gundam meet I went to, it was the Christmas one last year. Oh, okay. And that was the white... Oh, the white elephant I got was the uh, little white petite bear guy mm, yeah i still need to but then my petite panda you need to they're awesome yeah. but then alan came up and he's like yeah so you got the bear guy I'm like yeah he's like here have this and he hands me the barbatos box hell yeah I love and it's alan. like a whole barbatos so uh, he said it was alan. just parts really yeah so that's but no it looks like it's all there so cool yeah so, voila that's pretty radical i got actually. um i don't know how much of iron-blooded orphans you watch but there's the blonde girl I didn't. I got to uh, the part where they're in the uh, where they uh, link up with the bigger mafia dudes. So like the, ten episodes in, something, 10 like, 12, that. something like that. It's one of the you know like the the harem ship. Yeah. So it's one of the girls off there. It's her mobile suit. Oh, cool. Um, in order to understand the joke, I'd have to give spoilers. You probably haven't seen. So never mind. Yeah. I so act we'll like just... I never spoke. Radio. Can do. All right. Two minutes. Total side note: If you don't like Gundam, you should kill yourself. <clears throat> Gundam's a shit. I mean. It's it's just enjoyable. It out there. I wouldn't I wouldn't go say, go that far, but you know, <laughs> definitely <laughs> self harm. Yeah, there you, just start drinking a lot. You know, you have to kill yourself, but I mean, you know, <laughs> just get on that destructive path. <laughs> anyway, um, as long as we start you down it, yep, because it's real real hard to turn around. Jesus, <laughs> well that just blew through a lot of the time I had. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh. By the way, this podcast is now available on Spotify. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, we're, yeah. yeah, we're like we're moving up in the world. <laughs> like I said, we're moving into places where uh, my girlfriend's family can stumble across this madness and either think I'm doing good things or look at me like I'm even crazier. Well, I'm. I mean, like exactly zero of them are car people, right? I mean, well, one of them says he is, but I don't think he is. I think he's only a car guy because his mom guilted him into working at his family's shop. Gotcha. So he's a I very like reluctant. the Skyline GTR. Not even that. Not even. Uh, when I needed a starter for the Super, he kept asking me if it was a V6. Okay, well. Yep. 
<sighs> that's what that's what I was dealing with. All right, I'm gonna go downstairs and got the, the get the jokes, pizza. The jokes that would happen if, like, there was actually like a VQ35 in the engine bay. Yeah, no, back. seriously. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had to argue with a. Um, with an O'Reilly about whether or not my car was a dual overhead cam, and I'm like, we, not this is not Italy, it, r- right? You know, and I'm like, sure, whatever, dual overhead. Let me just give me my freaking alternator belt. <laughs> uh, which car is this? The Volvo. <clears throat> Sorry, I forget that I have two cars now. Well, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking it was the Volvo, but I didn't know yeah, for well, sure. Well, oh yeah, no, for sure, and it will because for whatever reason, no, it was Napa for whatever reason. The B two thirty is in their system as a, a dual overhead, which is funny because I mean it's an American parts store who only wants to sell you parts for a GM product, right? So it's amazing that they're even aware that there was ever a dual overhead B two thirty. No joke. <clears throat> well, and even then, it's it's kind of weird because they only came here in like eighty nine and ninety. So did we actually get the? Dual we overhead? actually got the the twin cams. Yeah. Really, I yeah. thought that was like just. Italy and Sweden. No, 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 no. We got we got very low production numbers of them, though. Mm. I actually just recently sold my sixteen valve head. Gotcha. I had the whole like the whole top end swap manifolds and everything. I pulled in like twenty twelve, and have been sitting on it. Never did anything with it. And then my old boss in North Dakota decided to buy it. Oh, that pineapple smells so dank. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Hey. How you doing, Bobby? This is oh. getting very awkward in this building. Hi. Let me guess. Getting awkward. Oh. My, Mike just pet me, and I liked it. I Good. Good. That's a good start. You know? <laughs> you know? Can We can wander down that road if you want. I mean... <laughs> we can keep getting wild with it, but... um. Yeah. So, I mean, who's going to pay me? Your is payment he... is Michael. How you doing? So, uh... <laughs> so do I just drop you off at the power company, or... <laughs> well, from everything I've read, I'm a power top. A power top. Anyway, so back to uh, Pirelli World <laughs> Challenge news. Good news! <laughs> Actually, this is this is uh, one step wow. forward. One, this is kind of a sixes here. So, uh, K-Pax, the team that used to run Volvos. Actually, they used to run Porsches, then they ran Volvos. And then they ran McLarens. I'm just gonna keep keep it moving. <laughs> Isn't a power top power by default? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm just over here making weird references to TV shows people have not watched. Oh, shit. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So K-Pax, bring uh, it back. K-Pax. Yeah. Uh, so they have gone from McLaren to Bentley. Better. Yes. Upgrade. Uh, Two Ds. Sort of. So, <laughs> so uh, they're going to be they're going to be uh, the premier you know Bentley team in North America, replacing uh, Bentley Team Absolute, which was a Malaysian team that would ship all their stuff over here from Malaysia just to run World Challenge. Yeah, money, kind of. Yeah. So the you know who knows? We appreciate everything that they did, but that was really really insane to expect them to keep doing that. Right. So, um. But this is kind of interesting because a lot of those K Pax drivers were also McLaren drivers, and now since they're not a McLaren team, we don't know who's coming back, who's doing what. So Um and also they're not getting the the new new G T Continental G T three that got released, you know, that debuted earlier this year where we saw the sweet renders of it. No, why not? Uh because they don't have enough ready. Damn it. So they're going to be running the uh, the first generation Continental GT3 with some upgrades, but yeah, okay. They, but they will be getting the uh, the new spec cars as soon as they're available. Oh, okay. So this is just a band aid. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, oh, and I also learned something. Uh, technically, Flying Lizard runs the K-Pax team. Okay. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. Huh. Like it's Team K-Pax, but it's run by well, kind of like uh, Multimatic builds all Ford's race cars and. You know, every Chevy race car is not actually a Chevy. It's built by somebody else. Right. So kind of the same deal. Okay. You know. Okay. But yeah, I just kind of surprised to see that it was Flying Lizard. Of all people. Right? Hmm. Anyway. Um, but I did read this in the uh, article I saw on Racer.com. So them being a Bentley team and campaigning those giant fucking houses could make them the biggest draw. 
They're fancy flats, by the way. Yeah. It's like we're just <laughs> going to see the Albert Hall and the Houses of Parliament right. facing town Buckingham Palace. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Let's, so, let us not forget the tapestries. Damn right. Um, but that could make them the biggest draw because uh, the World Challenge changed some rules. Mm. So now yeah. Acura is prohibited from directly supporting real-time. Which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, Cadillac went away because they just banned outright factory teams, which is, you know, that's fun. Which means that, that Magnus and Gainsco are... Well, Magnus was uh, kind of up in the air, but they signed Andy Lally, so I think they're going to go back to IMSA. They want to announce okay. what they're going to do. And uh, yeah, Gainsco shut their doors because this has been kind of a money-losing proposition. Damn. Which sucks because John Fogarty is a really awesome dude. Well, dang, that's no good. No, it's not good. But Yay for rule changes. Uh, it's, thanks, everybody. Appreciate mm. it. Although I will say this. Um, so we're going to be... Well, real time is still going to be there. They're going to be kind of a weird quasi-privateer team. Kind of like how k Pack is technically a privateer Bentley team, but they're going to get a lot of support from Bentley. Okay, she's going to take Hawaiian. I can guarantee that. Yeah. I'm going to take whatever's most convenient for you to grab. Well, the Hawaiian's on top. Okay. Okay. So I think that's Hawaiian all around. Okie dokie. <clears throat> as long as that real, real-time real name doesn't totally go away, because, I mean, that's me and my Keiichi Suchia fantasies. I mean, they're back in the NSXs, so that's, you know, they did reasonably... Uh, I mean, it would be nice to see, see them stick around and do more stuff. But, um, but we're also getting uh, the, uh, the TCR cars, this kind of global touring car rule set. They're getting their own dedicated class in uh, the touring car thing. So there's going to be the regular touring cars, the B-spec touring cars, which are hilarious, and then these crazy-ass TCR cars. Right. So, like, the RS3, you know, whatever the hell it is. You know, just these just these crazy-ass little things doing stuff. So that's going to be interesting to see. And then... uh. I also read more of the rules. All the uh, the GTS cars, they have to be GT4 homologated cars. So uh, okay, yeah. So uh, you're gonna be so there's gonna be more Camaro GT4s, Mustang GT4s, all the crazy GT4 spec like Audis and McLarens and Porsches and all that stuff. So yeah, that's gonna be fun to see. So it kind of fell apart. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. okay. I like Good. messy. Okay. Damn. Good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, damn. So, but uh, speaking of Michael Shank Racing, the guys who are running the uh, factory NSX program that they could only do for a year because IMSA let them do that for just the one year, um, they've made some driver changes. Already? Uh, yeah, so they since they, they're not getting all that factory money, thank you, Dave, um, they can't afford to run a full season two car team. So what they're going to do is they're just going to have the uh, the 93 car. Um, that's going to be their full season entry, so it's going to run all the races. The 86 car is only going to run the uh, North American, thank you, endurance championship races, which are the longer races. So like Daytona, Sebring, Watkins Glen, Petit Le Mans, you know, the stuff that's, you know, kind of up there in length. But Andy Lally's gone from the Michael Shank team. Uh, the ninety three. He's out of the ninety three car. Uh, Justin Marks comes over from Turner Motorsports. Oh, uh, okay. Lawson Oschenbach, a damn good driver in anything that you can get him in. He kicked ass in uh, Camaros in the uh, Continental Tire Series in the GS class. Did real good work in those Stevenson cars. Did amazing work in the Stevenson uh, R eight this year. Uh, he's coming into the Michael Shank team, and then uh, Mario Farnbacher, German. Wonder guy, he's a very, he's a very good driver, and G- a, a German Wonder guy. Is that like legit nickname or no? no that's that's, what a, that's a profession. Called. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So this is you know that's, what he that's does. That's on his gotcha. kind of like you know Rieger van der Zand, you know that dude who made that amazing pass at the top of the corkscrew with the prototypes. Right. right. You know how his business card just says on the back, "I fuck." <laughs> Mario Farnbacher's just says German Wonder guy. I'm okay with this. <laughs> oh, uh, speaking of Rieger, he's uh, joining. Uh, Wayne Taylor Racing to replace uh, Ricky, who left for oh. uh, yeah the Penske Acura program. Oh, really? Yep. So yeah, that's going to be an insane team. Yeah, that's that's a lot <laughs> of changes. Holy shit, oh, dude! It's currently the silly season. So yep. yeah, apparently so. Yeah, feel free. To, there you go. 
Uh, Dave is currently trying to eat some very messy pizza. It is a two-handed project. Oh, God. Mmm, there we go. Uh, anyway, and also... for you on power bottom. Yeah! Oh, that's going to get weird. Uh, let's see. And also in the 93 car is AJ the Dinger Almondinger. Uh, so that's going to be your driver lineup for the 93 car. In the 86 car, it's still Catherine Legg. Uh, Alvaro Parente, who was a K-Pax driver, still might be a K-Pax driver, but who knows. So we'll see. And also probably a couple other people. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and also Michael Shank is taking on an IndyCar program. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. In addition to this thing, it's going to take up a lot of time. Um, so there's that. Um, sticking with NSX's uh, Honda, America race, Honda of America race team, also known as HART. Uh, Convenient. They're, yeah, they're getting in the uh, endurance thing, so they're just going to be competing in, I think, the six North American Endurance Championship races. Fred of the program, Ryan Eversley, is going to be on the team. Uh, Chad Gilsinger, t- uh, current team leader, and they're going to be joined by a couple other drivers that they have yet to name. But Ooh, some stigs. Yeah, so you remember that uh, bare carbon NSX GT3 in the Honda booth? Oh, yeah. That ended up, I think that ended up being the heart car. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, so there's oh, that. We got some pictures of that one in the nude. Oh, yeah. And then um, another <laughs> Don't one. Don't look at my carbon. <laughs> my carbon is showing. Oh, no. Yeah. And then another one of the GTD factory teams that can no longer be a factory team, uh, 3GT, they were the Lexus team. Uh, they're going to be coming back. They're sticking with uh, sticking with Lexus, so huzzah. Oh, the, uh, the RCF, the GT3. You guys yeah. have fun with that one. I so mean, two full season entries. Yep. So awesome. Yeah. So so far they're the only former factory GTD team that's doing a full season with two cars. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. That'll be sweet. Yeah. And then we've also had the first preseason test at Daytona. Mm, yeah. Cool stuff happening in Florida. Yeah. We had the the all new BMW M8, the thing that's replacing the M6. You you what, mate? That was out there. Uh, the Acura DPI was out there, and Simon Pagano said it feels like a mini Peugeot. Peugeot being the only uh, prototype car that really challenged Audi back when Audi was dominating. Oh, okay. Yeah, before Porsche came in. And, uh, yeah, Mazda is back with their updated uh, RT24 with all the uh, Team Yoast, or Team Joast, the uh, people who made the Audis as fast as they were. So, they're Ooh. back. Yep. Bunch of goodies. Yep. So, it's going to be insane as soon as January rolls around. Cool. Yep. And speaking of insane, so McLaren finally showed off properly uh, the thing they're calling the Senna. We're calling it the Homer. Because it looks like the Homer. Except for the door. I was into it, but then if you look at the door shape, the trapezoid thing, yeah. Yeah. it reminds me of the Fortune 03 RX-7. Hmm. Oh. The Vail side RX-7. Yeah. Okay. I was looking at it yesterday, and I don't know, because I like the Veilside RX-7, but seeing that shape, I didn't hate it until I saw that. I was like, gotcha. Oh. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how much I like that. Um, it's an interesting looking car. Um, it is a it is the same twin turbo 4 liter V8 out of the, uh, the 720, although it, you know, with more power, uh, 789 horsepower, 580 pound feet of torque. Uh, dual clutch, seven speed transmission, rear wheel drive. This is the latest in McLaren's ultimate series, whatever the hell that means. But um, yeah, it's basically like a uh, a more hardcore P1 without any of this hybrid technology or all wheel drive or any of that stuff. So <laughs> the devil's lettuce. <laughs> so they were going back to the roots, including the design when they handed some five year old crayons. I mean, I hope there's a horn in multiple places because you can never find one when you're angry. Let's <laughs> get that bubble on the back so you don't have to hear the kids. Uh, yeah, um, it's got also other interesting stuff like a big ass spoiler and like active suspension and whatever. Um, and people are calling it the ultimate track car. Well, no, I think people with money and the idea of driving one of these are calling it the ultimate track car. I'm sure, it's just not McLaren's marketing department. It's well, probably just it, McLaren's marketing department. Well, calling it the ultimate. Well, Trent from Sandy kept bringing up some shadowy dude in K 
California, I guess, who has a bunch of McLarens, loves McLarens, and actually tracks his P1. And then Trent, he is the minority trend. Well, Trent got Trent and I got in a little argument about you know that thing being the ultimate track car because I put it to you that a race car is the ultimate track car because it was designed to you know yeah. only ever exist on a track. It doesn't have to meet any sort of pedestrian crash requirements or emission standards or anything. Right, and you also made the argument that uh, a dedicated race car or a car built to become a race car is also decidedly cheaper to maintain. Yeah. Than these vehicles. Yeah. And Trent kept arguing against me, so that makes me think he is a shadowy billionaire slash McLaren fanboy, who, if he is a shadowy billionaire... Um, we going to need to make some uh, some adjustments here. You need to break some bread, bro. Dude, like, like uh, how, long is, how long have you been keeping it a secret? When were you going to tell us? All right, Bruce Wayne. God we'll go ahead damn. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead and sever yourself from your uh, your underground lair here. We'll slap some green panties on Joey, put a cape on him, send him over. <laughs> I'm fucking yeah. down, dude. You had me at the green <laughs> panties part. I mean, <laughs> there cape, we go. Cape not required. Damn. <laughs> Take him to green panties and a ball gag. Take him to Fredericks of Hollywood. <laughs> Get you all kitted up. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, man. Uh, wow, zing. <laughs> make you a pretty, pretty princess. Duh. Yep. Anyway, so, um, well, because of that argument, it uh, spawned a question. We originally had a question of the week, but I decided, I made the executive decision to change it, because... Uh, because this is your show, goddammit. Well, yeah, and also because Brandon and Pizza Dad aren't here, or Brandon and Gavin aren't here. Right. And they kind of came up with this, so, you know, uh, the question of the week is, you know, what is the ultimate streetable track car? Because Trent ended up having to backpedal pretty hard in the face of overwhelming logic. Like you do when you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. We skedaddled past backpedal and slammed head on into excuse. He just yelled all back full. Yeah. Just cavitating. I did not have Iceberg! sexual relations with that woman. The Soviets could hear him. Just, you know. Anyway. So, yeah, I put the question out there that, uh, you know, what is the ultimate uh, daily drivable track car? And so I put that on uh, all the social medias. No, just uh, Instagram and Facebook because nobody cares about Twitter. <laughs> Except when I'm just out there just talking trash. And then people people join in. Or when I'm doing a witty wordplay. It's on your knee. There's a piece of bacon on your knee. There's a piece of bacon on my knee. Yes. It's on there's more important things like my voice. Okay, now bacon. Okay. Oh, I can God. participate in what you're saying. Oh, dear God. Oh. Wow. oh. That is. Oh, God. It's. Wow. There you oh go. There you go. So Get it. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's. that's wow. That is. That's satisfying. <laughs> Not wrong. Let's get a boat. Uh, I haven't even started on oh, this God. yet. Yeah, because yeah, I've been driving this thing. Oh, yeah. That's oh. right. Yeah. Bullhead port. Well, let's get, let's get a boat and get these kids married real quick. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh god. Uh, anyway, so I put the question out there on the old Instagram and on the Facebook, and let's go through some Instagram stuff real quick. Uh, so I feel I may have poisoned the well because I did specifically mention the GT3 RS as an option, and that was a, a thing that came up quite a bit. So that that is like the default answer now. That's what everybody's been saying. Okay, but I. All the rest of you need to not be a Gavin and think outside the box. Although I will say, so Trent did text me. He uh, he does hope that the Senna will be the ultimate streetable track car, but if you had to pick something that's actually, you know, available. Or affordable. Uh, he didn't go with affordable. Oh, okay. He went with uh, 720 LT, the long tail that does not actually have a long tail. But is it longer than the standard version? No. They just called it long. They just called it LT because it's you know a harkening back to the uh, the McLaren F1 long tails, which actually had a longer tail. But you know that's that's like applying this adhesive wood grain to the side of a car instead of actual wood and calling it a woody. Don't talk shit on my Roadmaster. <laughs> Okay, you know what? The Country Squire and the Roadmaster are probably the only two exceptions to this argument. I mean, we could probably find more. Well, that's a that's a different topic for a different day. Indeed. An error is preventing the slideshow from playing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hell of a screen show. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah. So, anyway. 
Uh, oh, let's see, Patrick Cushberry. We Cush, the underscore Cush 27. Oh, yeah. It says, uh, ultimate streamable track car. I mean, the GT3 RS is clear head and above anything else, but I say Caterham anything is usually a safe bet, too. Take any full-blown track car, add some mild sauce to the tune, cam exhaust, throw some carpet and a heater, and you're good to go. I wish we had more short course stuff stateside, like Knock Hill, Thruxton, Ebisu, and generally more club circuits. That may not bode well for international motorsport, but sometimes the big, long-flowing corners so often made stateside shadows out some smaller slash different platforms as an obvious choice, so it would seem at least. I like where you went with there, because, uh, yeah, I would like to see some smaller road course stuff. Yes. But, anyway... Um, uh, J.T. Watson, J.T. Watson Photography, and whatever his motorsport thing that he's trying to get going. Mm, yeah. Correct me, J.T., because I, I want to mention it specifically, but I can never remember what the hell it's called, even though you've told me a few times. Um, yeah, he says uh, GT3 RS would be, but as a second choice, I think an Ariel Adam. Now, which Ariel Adam, oh, though, do we think? That's a very good question. Because, I mean, the V8 is bonkers, Yep, as we know. That it is. I have a Honda tattoo, so I think I'm inclined. I, I'm forced to say the Honda. I mean, that is, that is one. Um, what there was the uh, there was an Ecotech version. Wasn't yeah, there? the supercharged Ecotech. Yep. Yeah. So <clears throat> I mean, I don't... it's an open wheel Cobalt. Exactly. Basically. <laughs> yeah. I don't driven think... the appropriate end of the vehicle. Yeah. I don't think you can necessarily go wrong. Um, with... Pretty good choice. Yeah. No I mean, lie. Really spoiled for choice with those three. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, I apologize, Michael. I seem to have given your couch some beer. That's fine. Okay. This is an old couch. No, that's a party foul, dude. You suck that shit up out the shag. You really want me to? No. No. God. Because <laughs> I know you'll do it. God in heaven. This is a 20 plus year old couch. I don't even want to know what the fuck's going to come out yeah, of there. If insane. anything, you've cleaned it. Yeah. yeah. You've christened it with high life, even though it's been christened with other substances. Mm. Anyway, let your imagination run wild with that one. Uh, let's see. Luke Dreher on Facebook. hey oh, uh, Super fan Luke. Yeah, summertime Saline S7, rest of the year in R35. Okay. Uh, Brandon Kuhn went with the Beetle. Something. Let's see. Of course he does. He's, he's the resident Luftgekühlt. Did it just say Beetle? Beetle. GT3 RS. It's a Beetle. Oh, it'd be scary enough. It's a Beetle with scaffolding. <laughs> uh, let's it see. really is. Uh, well, where's the masonry? We'll get there. Uh, let's see. Laredo Wade Warby, ACR Viper. Interesting choice. Oh, well, he is a Mopar guy. All right. And then let's see. Joshua Scarf, or Scharf says GT4 or an AMG GTR. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Hi. Being that Josh is a Mercedes guy, I understand his logic I'm, behind that. I'm way with you on that yeah. one for yeah. sure. So let's see. We then got into. Damn it. Just show me the post. Meh. So, we then got into some other stuff, because I kept posting this thing multiple times, because that is the kind of person that I am. Word. Yeah, we got some more responses. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scott nominated his uh, E36 at 325. Of course he did. And not a bad choice. I mean, it's what it's it's what it does. I like it. You know? Just wish it had a bigger seat, which I think we both agreed on. It needs to be fat kit friendly. Yeah. So, that was, uh, you know... I need to be able to wedge myself in there, buddy. That's the only thing we really need. I think you need to sit yourself in there, not wedge yourself in there. Either I think or. the wedging is the problem. Either or. Let's see. Uh, well, like, yeah, Cameron Harrell liked the uh, the Corvette that I posted. I posted a picture of Travis Tidball's uh, ST3 uh, C5 Corvette that is now Laguna Seca friendly because that is now his home track. That's right. He has moved. Yep. That's right. I used to uh, used to mount tires for him. Yeah, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Miss you, Travi pants. Uh, miss you at the banquet too. Yeah, went to the NASA banquet. Got some interviews recorded. We'll be releasing those fairly soon. Oh, awesome! Just got to stitch them all together. That's all good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Think think Scott made an ass of himself. He, I mean, he was playing it fast and loose and going downhill really quick. Settle down, cold trickle. Yeah, uh, it was all right. Um, let's see. Uh, Clark Pedersen said, of course you can. It just depends on what level of discomfort you want to put up with on the street. And then I responded, or how much the law you want to skirt. 
because that yeah, is some magic. You know, if you have a guy, you know, yeah, you know, I'm totally living to a little officer. I just forgot to update my license, <laughs> huh? or, or just use like the student, the student thing. Oh yeah, I'm just going to school. Don't they install a biblioteca? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Austin. <laughs> yeah, Austin <laughs> Fenn said you already took a picture of it, referring to the Corvette or a GT3. So yeah, then like we said, Scott uh, threw out his threw out his Black Betty. Of course. No, not a bad car. I mean, no, it's definitely not cheap. It's well sorted. Gets the job done. No, doesn't eat tires unless Gavin's driving. Hey oh. Anyway, let's see. Uh, Gavin, Dan- you know we love you. It's just you're not here, so we have to jab at you. We gotta. Let's see. Uh, Dan Chalinski, big fan of building a C5 vet. For that function, it is such a capable chassis for the money. If it were to be a no-budget car, then I would be tempted to say possibly the new AMG GT4 or the M4 GTS. But that is possible because everyone is saying the Porsche. Oh, maybe the Camaro ZL1 1LE. Like, the new new one. I won't argue with that. That new nope. new. That new new. So... Uh, then we get into the fun stuff. Ian Perry, Potato Sparkles. Did you <laughs> a Dotson? <laughs> yep, a stock Dotson. <laughs> and I had to follow up with the uh, Dotson. We are driven Damn. Uh, for, from the uh, the dating. I think it was the it was an old dating game. Oh god, that's advertisement. Amazing. That's amazing. Let's see. Then Derek Edgington comes in. Ultimate GTR. Big, lazy American V8 power and reliability on European suspension and chassis. Makes for a relatively low-cost street tear that can still get decent miles per gallon and comfort. You know, I will have to agree with him on that. I've been a fan of the GTR, the Ultima, for a long time. Yeah, it's been interesting. Wasn't it that car that Top Gear didn't want to put on their board? Yeah. Way yes. back when? Way yes. back when. That is the car. Yeah. I mean, there are so many different ways you can option that car, and it is still essentially a kit car. Yeah. Mm. So... I don't know that kit cars technically count on their board. Eh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely I don't sure. I think so. Although some of the stuff they put up there is real close. Questionable, right. Yeah. I get it. So anyway, and then uh, David Curtis says uh, S54 swapped E36. Oh, I can only imagine what his thought process is on that one. No, right? Hmm. It's like yeah. he's got one or something. Uh, I mean, it's, it's weird, you know? Hmm. It's weird how you say something like that. Funny, right? I know, and then I shared it on my uh, personal page, and I got some interesting... There we go. I got some responses. Uh, Gregerson Valdez. It's a 2015 Subaru WRX. Because I mean, he, I think he's kind of biased. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. Still hard you, Greg. But it's I mean, also potentially wrong. Oh. <laughs> hey, man, it can go fast, and it can get nuggets. I think... I think <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me. Yeah. I mean, I I think uh, I think our our lovely racing chica Jamie Moreno would probably think that WRX is the right answer. As would Sally. She's allowed to As think that. Sally. She can think that all she wants. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I mean, Marcus Malone has just set a street all wheel drive record for uh, global time attack in a WRX. So rad. <laughs> I mean, he broke it in the process, but God damn it, he set that record. But where's the vape? <laughs> Where's the vape machine, though? He also wrecked his clutch doing a space race at the at the donut garage. Oh, no. Holy shit, he's cutting the fuck out of that apple. That dude is dicing the shit out of that apple, yeah. Yeah, these guys are professionals. So what what show are we watching? <laughs> yeah, that, that, by the way. It's like, I can't remember. That stabbing technique is certainly a professional. We had to work on that one. But, I mean, it's this is basically, like, what, they're stealing bachelor's frig- refrigerators. Yeah. And then they're taking... It's We're watching Chef and My Fridge. Okay. There it is. The best chefs in Korea go head-to-head to create impromptu dishes that feature ingredients found inside the guest star's very own refrigerators. There are two seasons. They are on Netflix. I mean, it's pretty interesting. I mean, yeah. Things considered. I, I mean, listen. We can, either watch, we can either watch the first episode of The Grand Tour or, you know, this. <clears throat> And I mean, I haven't seen the Grand Tour yet, but I'm I'm okay with this. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna... I was okay with this. I mean, I I enjoyed that first episode, but this is yeah, this is fascinating. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's see. Nick Stuckey said an E39 M5 for sure. If I had to retire and get a stock car, I'd just do that. I mean, that I'm a hundred ten percent in support of that one. Not yeah. wrong the E39 at all. chassis is phenomenal. Yep. 
That's why I'm building one as a drift car. Attaboy. Yeah. So then Matt Barker, uh, our resident Volkswagen nut, mm-hmm. doing weird, questionable things. Oh, no, I'm not questioning any of it. They're weird for sure. I am. Um, oh, okay. Uh, he says, what if it's not available in the USA? And I say, hit me with it. And then he says, KTM Crossbow. Ooh. I, I thought we could get the crossbow here. Pretty. Sh- I, I don't know. I mean, that's basically what that car is supposed to be, though. That's one of those cars that you yeah. just buy it yeah. to drive it to the track. Yeah. And like that's I mean, it's either going to be a status symbol like a Vanderhall or a Polaris. Whatever it is. Whatever the hell they call that. Yeah. It's a TIE fighter, X-Wing. Thingamajig. I don't even know what the fuck they call it. That's yep. what I'm going to call it. Yep. So, anyway, and then, yeah, this is uh, light and fun. Oh, and with a few parts from IE, it could be scary fun. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah, and then our buddy Abe Barlow says an Adam. Of course. I reiterate my previous question, which one? Exactly. So, yeah, there's that. So, uh, now, I, I've got a question, though. What do you got? What kind of track? Say the ultimate See, that's affordable another, track car. See, that's another good question. I mean, I think for our intents and purposes, we have to assume that UMC is the track I'm referring to. And what okay. configuration? I'm not sure. Okay. Can we take it off any really sweet jumps? I mean, if you really want to, go nuts. Okay, you know, Sick. I'm not going to stop you. I do think, though, the big course is a good way to base it off of, because then you have <clears throat> you have a really nice, varied kind of course there. You have low-speed sections and then one big old high-speed section. That's so really true. It kind of You have to find some sort of happy medium there. Are you yeah, talking no. the full course, not the, the outside course? The, uh, I mean, whatever's going to give you the big, long straight. Okay. Because either so, way, I mean, you have... That's either the full or the outer loop. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean... As long I mean, as we I imagine both. full is... I mean, God well, forbid, I don't know everything well, about UMC right now. Eh, it's all right. Um, but most of the time out there, you're not going to be on the, uh, the full configuration just because <laughs> oh for sure the only the only thing i've ever done is east course yeah i mean east is fun oh yeah, was, yeah. oh yeah oh loads of fun yeah oh, dude oh, yeah. uh west is not without its charm mm-hmm. you know there's truly a a power course just a lot of hammer down a lot of wide open spaces for you gotcha yeah but i mean if you're running the i mean ostensibly if the track is just in like outer loop um yeah that's going to be a that's going to favor your more high horsepower things. Ooh, easy. There you go, champ. So, yeah, but I mean, one beer and I am drunk. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, I throw out the GT3 RS, you know, in the argument, and like, yeah, I mean, something like that, or you know, yeah, that's probably what I just end up going with, just because it works. It is. Tested and true. I mean, it's simple and effective. It gets the job done. I, I My personal answer would probably be a C6 ZR1 with yeah. pretty much the entire Fod Racing catalog on it. There you go. So, there's that. Well. <clears throat> what would you have? What would I have? I can't just default to Verasa like I always do. Because every time somebody asks me what is the car you would pick, I'm always like Verasa. Because nobody but, knows what it is. Well, that and it's, I mean, you're getting an inline six turbo yeah. yep. with a sedan, which I'm always four door. There's okay. nothing functional about it. I just like four doors. That's, that's all right. Um, but I mean, that's because that's the thing that I had. I was thinking about this earlier is, you know, I mean, what is your ultimate track car? It's, it's really, I mean, subjective because for me, what do I really, you know, what, what is my ultimate streetable track car? It's something that I'm going to drive every day right. and I want to want to take to the track. For me, it, it right. is going to be the queue. Because I want to take true. that to the track. And it's not even that it's functional. I'd tear the back seats out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, don't, it's, yeah. I, I just like four doors. So, I mean, the Verasa for me would be really good because you're getting a much better motor, a much more moddable motor. Um, but looking at the pictures earlier, I really think 350Z is a good choice. Yeah. Are we talking straight out of the box, not even modding it? I mean, yeah, because that was the whole thing. Like, with the Senna, it is, you don't have to do anything with it. You just take it to the track. So... Hence why I said something like a GT3 RS, because it's got all the, the necessary okay. attract okay. accoutrement that you would want. Gotcha. And then, you know. Okay, well, I'm, I'm still sticking with my answer, C6ZR1. That's not a I'm bad gonna one. I'm going to have to stick with the AMG GTR era. Mm. You know? Yeah. Call Solid me, choice. You know. No, that's a great want, car. I, I, great car. I'm, I'm in on it. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a, I mean, 
that's a hell of a car. A lot of those are going to be popping up in uh, World Challenge next year. Uh, All right. In GT4 trim. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, see, a lot of teams pick those up, so it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Very but, good. Yeah, I mean, it already looks like a really good chassis, so, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be a good street car and also a uh, track car and, you know, more pedestrian trim. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Like being a Mercedes, you know it's going to be comfortable. Oh, yeah. And at the very least, some measure of reliable, so. Yeah. So, Which that, right that now is, is a big thing huge. in my book. Yeah. yeah. Reliability. <laughs> that is true. Mm-hmm. Reliability is key. And rock solid like your 35-year-old Volvo. Well, yeah, and having to solve an intermittent misfire. Well, yeah. Small Fixed. Shit. Fixed. Small shit. But <laughs> <laughs> still, it'll sort itself. I'm all about not having to worry about the car. Touche. Right nice. Yeah, it's one of those things that'll sort itself out. Yeah. Yeah. Well... That's all the stuff that we had planned. Uh, I will say this. Uh, this Thursday, the day this comes out, as you're hopefully listening to it, uh, over at Spadelli's, uh, Super Tuner and Take Luck are finally debuting that drift video that they Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, That's right. Uh, we shared the event page. We'll share it again. So uh, RSVP to that because we don't want to be that group of people that, you know, everybody orders, like, the cheapest appetizer they can get and water and, you know keeps paying customers out exactly so yeah um but yeah it's looking to be pretty cool and then i believe the full video actually gets released on uh through through super tuner on friday oh so, very cool yeah so, so it's like a, a, a viewing yeah it's kind of a little deal yeah exactly gotcha and then, cool uh, yeah and then awesome uh, fan of the program luke dreyer he mr super fan mm-hmm. yeah he sent us a uh Little MySpace throwback thing that I think we should go through and answer these questions, and I think we should start with Dave. Oh boy! Oh, Jesus! All right, Dave. Oh boy! Okay. What was your first car? Uh, my first car, '79 Mazda RX-7. Interesting. <clears throat> Not surprising, <clears throat> but interesting. It um, started a very, very long downhill slope. I mean, you started at the bottom and just kept going. I, I, I kept, I hit bedrock and I kept grinding. Dear God. Uh, last car that you sold. Oh, God. Does taking it to the junkyard count? Do they give you money? <laughs> On the last one, no. <laughs> Whatever. Hit us with it. Uh, uh, that 90... Oh, God. What was it? Oh, no. It's a, it's an 80, 87 BMW E30. It was a convertible. Ah. I got it as a parts car. Hmm. Oh, all right. Makes sense. That thing's getting... Sadly enough, now that I think about it, I have not sold a vehicle I've owned in a long-ass time. Ooh. Nobody wants to give me anything for any of the garbage I have, and I just drive them into the ground anyway, so... Hell, you know. You're getting your, mo- you're getting your money's worth. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, last car that you bought. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm leading all you fuckers on, actually, with this one, because it's that, it's that Ford... <clears throat> that I bought as a project that is not a Taurus. No, it is not a Taurus. So so yeah. that's what I bought. All right. And let's see. Uh, the favorite car that you've ever owned. My favorite car that I've ever owned. Um, okay, this is a tie between any of my Starions and Conquests mm-hmm. and one of my Turbo 2 FCs. Nice. So... It's between one of those two. Oh, speaking of FCs, that white one. Oh. Moved. Whoa. Laterally, but it moved. Whoa. Yeah. So it just moved over a parking space. Yeah. I wonder if it runs. God, no. Oh. It looks like there's rust coming out of places, so. I mean, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that thing's so dead. sad to see a 10th anniversary rotten away like that. Yeah. I mean, the dude didn't want to do anything with it. He didn't want to get rid of it. Yeah. So, automotive hoarding, people, it's a real thing. It really is. Yep. Let's see. Uh, longest period of time you've ever owned a car for? Oh, um, it was my first Starion. Uh, I had it for five and a half years. Not bad. And I actually still see it every day. I drive past it on my way to work. (laughs) (laughs) Sitting in a field with two other Starions that I at one point in time owned. (laughs) God damn. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, how terrible that is. I mean, you know, that's that's a thing. Uh, let's see. It's the car that you wish you never sold. 
Uh, oh, man. <clears throat> the car I wish I never sold. Uh, definitely my first car. Oh, yeah? Uh, the 79 RX-7. All right. I regret pretty much every day getting rid of that car. Life is nothing if not full of regrets. Mm, indeed. Uh, let's see. What's the most fun car that you've owned? Oh, most fun. Oh. Uh, honestly, I want to say the most fun that I've owned was... <laughs> For the listener at home, Joey knocked over a bunch of empty beer bottles. All of the beer bottles that I have emptied. At a boy. All of them. At a boy. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and... God damn it. <laughs> I added two to the list. Ugh. I'll have to live here, you know. Jesus. <laughs> when it rains, Dave. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry, that was a stretch of a joke. Pretty much. Pulled it in the bargain bin, pulled out NHL 2K14. Oh, no. Uh, (laughs) All Pro Football 2K7. (laughs) God damn. That wasn't Uh, even worth putting the disc in. (laughs) I literally have a copy of like NHL 2K7 or something, or 2K4. It's a PS2 game. Wow. And I bought it as a Christmas gift, and I never even gave it to the person. Oh, man. So I haven't even opened the box for my own self. It's just sat on the shelf. Oh, no. Mm. Oh. Uh, that is to pull that out and <clears throat> yeah, see what that's about. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my most my most fun car. Yeah. Uh, it has to be my golf. Yeah. Yeah. One eighty swapped golf. That is a fun one. I mean, that car is, is pretty much the definition of torque steer. <laughs> it's also the definition of understeer. Yeah. Currently, the definition of electrical fire. <laughs> and I'm working on an MGB. So, <laughs> well, Jesus, <laughs> gone from bad to worse. Yeah. Yeah, hardest good fire excuse by to Lucas. get one of those badass like car fire suppression kits, so you have a little string you can pull every time. God, I almost feel like I need to, <laughs> like I need to just inject the entire car with Halon. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But here's the problem with those uh, suppression systems: they're a pain in the ass and very expensive to recharge. Yes. Yeah, that's why everybody keeps yelling at me whenever I go to pull their fire suppression system. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, let it burn. Let it burn. God damn it. Fuck with me. <laughs> listen, listen. Having a fire suppression system in your car doesn't make you a badass. Having a fire suppression system after you set your car on fire for the third time does. <laughs> Shout out to Sean Murphy. Dang, that's a... Uh... Blowing that Subaru up and setting it on fire multiple times. I mean, at least he's getting good at it. Mind you, it still has a full interior. Hey! Yeah. How much of that is still melted to the, like the drivetrain tunnel? I mean... As far as I could tell, it looks like it's all reasonably nice. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, there's just a jungle gym where the back seat is. Okay. But, you know. <laughs> so there's still cushions. There's just a roll cage that goes around it. Yeah. That's rad. And a headliner. I want to sit in the back seat of that car. Hey, yeah, they gave luck. the white guy an obligatory medal. Yay, white guy got something. We're not Yay. xenophobic. Whoa, we this, got two stars. Hot wow, damn. This like, guy. Wow. Whitey won. <laughs> I mean, you know, it happens. <laughs> I mean, dang, dude! In, in Korea, I'm, I'm surprised they weren't like, "Yo, dog, check your privilege." Mm. Anyway. Well, that's the funny thing about a country like that. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right? Ah, uh, all right. Anywho, moving forth. Yes. Uh, let's see. What's the uh, worst car that you've owned? Worst car that I've owned? Yeah. Uh, 1989 Chevrolet Citation. Ooh. It had an Iron Duke and an auto. <laughs> With a name like Citation. Uh, it was a red, red on red. Ooh, it had the red velour interior <laughs> oh. and the red faded garbage GM paint. God damn. Boss. <clears throat> and I, I rod knocked the piss out of that Iron Duke. God damn. <clears throat> Wrecked that poverty whip. Indeed. Uh, let's see. If you got 30 grand, what are you doing with it car wise? 30 grand? Yep. Can I just spend that on mods for an existing car? Yeah. Uh, shit. Now I got to think about that one. Uh, uh, Thirty grand. I'd honestly probably just buy. A, I'd, I'd probably buy like a higher mileage C six. Put some goodies yeah. on it. There you go. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite manufacturer and least favorite manufacturer. Oh boy. Um, I don't. Oh. Ooh. It is actually a really hard question. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be a hard question. It's yeah. a hard question. Yeah. Least favorite? Pontiac! They don't even make those anymore! Uh, no, no, I, that's not my least favorite. <clears throat> I think my least favorite, honestly, is like... Uh, 
Duh. I don't know. Probably Peugeot. All right. I, I like maybe one car they've ever made. Um, favorite manufacturer? Oof. Um, I'm I'm gonna come out of left field. A lot of people aren't gonna expect this one. Uh, Ford. All right. Ford, I'll probably say is my my most favorite. Well, I mean, I hope you would at least have some affinity for them with the Taurus Challenge and all that. Well, I mean, I just like junkyard cheap cars. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> looks like looks like you and Homeboy have something in common. Yeah. Oh, at the very least. Well. Oh, oh wow. Except oh, in no. the opposite. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. What is your favorite car in the world, and what is the car that you most hate? My favorite car in the world. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Don't look at the bookcase. A bookcase can't help you. Uh, no, it's it's not. <laughs> if anything, it's going to ruin you. I, I, I saw Full Metal Jacket, Sin City, and Fight Club, and now, now my brain is going the wrong direction. Mm. Uh, <laughs> well, there's a lot of mental anguish in that list. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of problems. I mean, favorite car in the world. You just said that totally wrong. Favorite, favorite ca- car. Pause in the world. There you go. <laughs> favorite car. Pause in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna get that when you see the uh, the Grand Tour. This is the best car pause in the world. <laughs> okay, Hammond, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite car in the world, uh, Lancia Stratus. All right, not a one. bad choice. <laughs> not a p- I love the wedge. Uh, yeah, I that is get- the sexiest doorstop I've ever seen. I love the gargonzola slice. Yes. I love getting uncomfortably touchy with people when I need to change gear. <clears throat> well, I mean, there should only be one person in that car anyway. But why do they have two Stratus. seats? Who's going to be calling out my pace notes, Dave? Me, baby. I have split personalities. Dear God. <laughs> should I be turning left uh, here? Left. Three. Titans. Oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Reminds oh, no, me of why? Destiny and that AI that <laughs> God damn, yeah. sometimes is very polite, sometimes is very... Yeah, the car harsh. you hate most in the world. Uh, but why does everybody hate the Prius? I don't care. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go with the Prius, actually. <laughs> that is I my answer. I don't understand. I you, really don't. The Prius is not the problem. It's a lot of the people who own the Prius. That's true. I that's, can't. I can't hate the blender. I can definitely hate the margarita that's blended with. So don't hate the game. Hate the player. Yes. yes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Fuck the player. Damn right. <laughs> the game ain't respecting. All right. I ain't putting no respect on my name. Damn. Respect. Respect. R e s p e k. Respect. Yeah. And then uh, last thing you bought for your car. Last thing I bought for my car. Well, for uh, you, a car. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> There's obviously two very different philosophies being put into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, shit, I'll, I'll answer both. Uh, the last thing I bought for my Subaru, my Outback, my daily driver, uh, headlights. And I kind of riced out and I got 8,000K 55 watt HADs. Because I was tired of people brighting me. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. Person with brighter lights wins. Damn. So, there's that one, uh, and then as far as what I bought, chronologically, most currently, um, I'm actually on my way to pay for it after this podcast recording, and it's a rear axle for that new Ford Project car. All right. Well, then. So, there you go. Okay. And that must be... That's it. That must be it. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. That was a so. lot, like, large. Yeah. So. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well. Yom. Or Joey. Or whoever. Or Zan. Whoever wants to answer this, screw I it. I owned two cars. Uh, well, consider then. yourself lucky for only having two cars. Yeah. No, you'd be proud of her. She has a Mercury Sable. Hey. Yeah. Sable. Five and a half years on that path. Yes. Hell yeah. Yes. F- future Taurus Challenge contender, huh? Yeah, that's uh, what I'm uh, saying. Huh? Uh, uh, and the one full interior uh, car of the ball, I'm oh, sure. Yeah, let's oh. do it. I mean, <laughs> fuck it. I like... Yeah, no, her Ooh, passenger freeze side. Freeze open. They yeah, freeze they freeze the, the fuck open. Apparently, that's a thing. No, we're <laughs> coming. You can Google it. And yeah. Because we did. We were at the arcade, and she's like, my door's frozen open. So I f- Googled that really quick. And apparently, the Sables just, the 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 
mechanisms freeze so open. The, so you go to close the door and it just goes whoop and then opens. <laughs> it's like what uh, the hold on but, yeah. So I had to sit there with a pocket knife and wiggle it a bit to get yeah latch mm. freezing. It's already there in the Google. Ho- holy results. shit! Yeah, Google's all like, "Oh yeah, I got you, fam." <laughs> oh, I, I know exactly what that is. Frozen door latch. Taurus, Tor- Taurus Car Club of America. <laughs> TaurusClub.com. I'm not even a member on this forum. That's surprising. <laughs> holy shit! I need to get on this. <laughs> but I can't. Wow! <laughs> the door was cracked open. I, I tried to close it again. Upon further inspection, the latch wasn't staying up. After, After I closed the door, I liberally sprayed the latch with WD-40. Yep. Then I heated with a hair dryer. After about two yep. minutes, I heard a little noise and checked the door, and all was well. Huh. If I go to park it and it freezes open, I have to park it right next to the house because we have a heat gun. Nice. We put an extension cord on it. We use a heat gun. Oh, go. my God. <laughs> nice. That is amazing. Oh. This is a thing I didn't know about Tauruses, <laughs> yeah, they, and I feel they, like they I know open. literally goddamn everything about a Taurus. <laughs> The more you know. God. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, when she first said that, my door's frozen open. I'm like, what? Can, can, can you please repeat the statement? Are you can sh- you use that in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> can you spell that, please? Yes, I drive a Mercury Sable. In no, 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 not, not that one. <laughs> Damn. I get why people drive Sables and Tauruses. I really do. I get oh, it. Oh, God. I want one. I can't justify having car number 20. <laughs> true. Actually, I can, and I should, yeah, but you, I mean, I just won't. to get that number, you might. I'll be Fuck. selling my Sable in six months. Get at you, boy. Like, <laughs> it's a 24-valve motor. Yo. Uh. Straight up fucking Duratec. All right. Yeah. I'm in. I'm, I'm in. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry. Because it's a Sable console shifter. What up? <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. One of these chefs just put a uh, soju, <coughs> sugar, and instant coffee into a pitcher, and he's making a cocktail with it of some sort. Oh, I'm fucking in. <laughs> Jesus. But why? The, I just don't understand. Like, the spoon? So, he's focusing. You just no, so dump like, it in there. So when you pour something on the back of a spoon, it runs off all sides of the spoon. Okay. So you don't just have, like, when you're making a cocktail like that... You don't have to, like, stir it or anything. It just kind of, like, is. Okay, so why don't I just stir it? Because <laughs> when you stir it, you start melting the ice that's in there. You melt it quicker, oh. so it dilutes everything. Yeah. Is that why Bond likes it shaken instead of stirred? Uh, Bond likes it shaken instead of stirred because Ian Fleming doesn't know how to order a martini. I see why we call you Doc Taste. What I'm here for? <laughs> I mean, he just he just slapped the flavor out my mouth. I'm no typically like a, a drink that's made with you know clear stuff like a martini where it's you know gin and vermouth on a shelf somewhere else in the room. Um, you stir stuff like that because if you shake it, then it gets cloudy. Gotcha. Yeah, you stir it and it stays clear. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So, I see. Yeah. Thank you, Doc Taste. You're welcome. <laughs> You I've wanna... always felt like clear alcohols were for the mentally challenged and women on menopause. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I've just pissed off everybody in the room. I'm going to go back to my Jack Daniels, thank you. Jesus. <clears throat> I'll say Winston Churchill. Uh, <laughs> he enjoyed a martini. Uh, he preferred to, uh, his martini was, I preferred to drink a glass of gin while sitting in the bathtub and looking at a bottle of vermouth on the counter. <laughs> Okay. I like it. I'm going to have to try that one. Winston, Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of England, during the war. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, Joey, who wants to tackle this? Do you want to? Sure. I can, I can tackle this. I think I have a couple answers in there. Okay. Thank you, miss. All right. Okay. So L- line them up. My first car was actually not a car. It was a 92 Jeep Cherokee uh, Laredo. The Reisler. The Reisler was the 4 high output. Uh, fucking Rod knocked it because it's the first car. So then the funny thing about that car was uh, we called it the Reisler because we'd made it our mission to just rice the shit out of it. Oh and we put one of those, it was like a four, three and a half, four inch, like glass packed chrome tip from Checker Damn. That, we, that we sort of fastened onto the back of it. Among, among other things, it actually had a. Um, so if you go and look at church organs from around that era, they don't have um, 
the pipes they don't i mean they might have them but they don't run off of that it's an electric piano and it has these um i would say four foot wide by four foot tall oh they're these giant speaker cabinets yeah and they and each of them has um whatever the you know rectangle dimension uh speaker you know uh, arrays in these speaker cabinets so there was a guy who was selling for five bucks a cabinet like I said, it's like three and a half foot wide, three Massive. and a half foot tall. Like it was worth it for the lumber. Yeah, right. Five bucks a thing. He was selling a bunch of these. Rad. And it was the same color. It was like this painted kind of maroon color, and it matched the interior of the Jeep. I bought one and just laid it into the back of the Jeep. Awesome. And all the entire speaker array went into just two wires, and we wired it into the back of one of the hatch speakers. Of course. And just laid it in the back. I mean, we ruined that fucking thing. We jumped it, and the next day the radiator cracked. Like, well, it cracked obviously on the jump, but it, there was a crack that showed itself the day after, and then we rod knocked it into oblivion. It and was, that must have taken a while because those four hoes are pretty robust. Yeah, it was a lot of uh, sliding around in the snow, bouncing it off the rev limiter because Tokyo Drift had just come out. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's a thing. Uh, last car I sold would have been the LS four hundred um, to one David of Kendigat, um Garage. He really? works over there, huh. or works or worked, but he's the one who bought the LS four hundred. Oh, that's rad. right after it got wrecked. Okay, so I don't know if he still has it, but um, be cool if he does. I don't know if you're curious about the old. The old Takiari piped LS. You can I, go ask him. I do miss that mm-hmm. car. I miss it too. We I really do. do. Yeah, it was fun. It, it had a premature death I, at the hand of some stupid teenagers. I, I will say that um, in my search for a new car, I have found a pair of LS 430s mm. that I've been looking at pretty hard that are in I, the price range. Just fucking do it, dude. Just pull the trigger. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's a Toyota You're, you're not going to get any any like any hesitation for me here. I mean, just either, fucking do it. It's either that or they're, they're a pair of... Uh, there's an 09 Legacy sedan and like an 08 Outback. Okay, you know what? Like, I daily a Subaru and I fucking yeah. love it and you used to daily a Subaru for many years. Yeah. Fuck it, get the LS. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll just... We'll see what we'll see what happens. <laughs> Gotta find some time this week to go take a look at them. And gotcha. Gotcha. So he said LS 430s, so they're at least, what, 2000? Yep. Um, yeah, you're gonna be looking... I mean... So, That's a UCF 30, right? So a UCF 20s would have gone to the late 90s, so I believe the mid-2000s. Mm-hmm. I forget the exact year because I am now five, four and a half beers deep. Hey! Uh, so, but yeah, so I mean, you're looking at the later 2000s. Right. Uh, but I mean, it's it's the 3UZ. Right, you know, yeah. You're the, making yeah. 300 horsepower and it's luxurious as shit and you're not going to have a problem. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's a late UCF 20 or UCF 30, it's got big boy brakes all the mm-hmm. way around. Yeah, got big yeah. four pots up front, some nice two pots in the back. Well, listen, proper suspension. If the roads were a bit smoother and more well maintained around here, I'd be living that VIP life mm. real hard. Fuck, you don't even have to. I that's the one thing that bothers me about owning like big body sedans. Is the immediate thing is, thank you for driving VIP cars, or you're going to VIP it, aren't you? It's like you don't have to. No, but you can I leave want, it the fuck alone if you but want. But I would want to. If mm. I'm going to do oh. something with sporty with a sedan, I'd get well uh, that. My answer for the what I would do if I got thirty grand: mm-hmm. first gen CTSV, five lug hubs all around, which means I get to harvest hubs and brakes from either a C5 or a C6 Z06. So you might as well just go ahead and step up to ZR1 good shit. And then I'm going to put an LS3 in there. Perfect. Yeah. Can you? How much is a first gen CTSV? Like I found them for under ten. They're clapped out hunks of my shit. Life. But well, like you can get ones that have been raced and probably still have nitrous. Jets drilled into the intake manifold for like eighty five hundred. Yeah, like the stuff you're finding in, you know, like the sub ten range is just like you're buying it more or less, you know, because you're hoping that transmission is still okay, or at least <laughs> right. it's still in the car. Right, and I imagine you're not looking for the six speed cars. I mean, six speed cars are still over ten, right? Yeah, they're definitely okay. over okay. ten. So but, you're you're looking at the autos, but still. But I mean, yeah, like that's a almost indestructible auto. Yeah. 
So I say almost, but but yeah, I mean, well, my thirty grand car would have you know, I'd spend the money for a six speed car, of course, you know. But yeah, it you know, but no, like for an LS, it's like you know, I'd, I'd, I would make it a nicer place to be, you know. Definitely neck pillows. Mm, because, yeah, yeah. Those neck pillows are nice. Yes, especially so, when it comes time for car naps at work. Oh, uh, yeah. Lay that seat back, and it's nice. Yeah. So thought about putting them in the Volvo for a while just to have them. Yeah. So I, thought, I have one that's in the trunk of the Volvo. Rad. And then the other one's sitting in the shed. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm not just like VIPing out any big sedan that I get. It's like. That's uh, yeah. It's just something because that's like I like I said earlier is my thing is with the big sedans. I kind of want to make a trackable one. Well, I mean, if I listen, trust me, the temptation to put like a you know CD 9 behind that three UZ, yeah, and then just you know party with it. That's that temptation is there. Unfortunately, the budget does not exist for that. No, so, certainly not. No, but no. I mean, yeah. For my my intents and purposes right now, it just has to you know drive. And sure. dri- driving is good. Yep. And I wish more of my vehicles did that. And if it's cushioned, it looks cool, even better. So. Indeed. Yep. Yeah. Well. Anyway, Joey, continue. Last car I bought uh, was the Infinity Q45. Yeah. 2002 Q45, which yep. has been a learning experience to say the least. I can't say I regret buying it, but it certainly went down a different road than I thought it would go down. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'll get to that later. Okay, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Favorite car I've ever owned. Now, I was actually thinking about this in the bathroom earlier, because this is difficult for me. Because I had the LS400, and that mm-hmm. was fun to drive, and it was a unique experience being followed around by people and their cell phone cameras. Uh, but there was also the Lexota and that entire yeah. build up. The Lexota ES300 estate. Yeah, yeah. And all of that <clears throat> fun. Or I guess it was the ES200 estate. It was the ES200 because it was because, a four cylinder. It was yeah. Well, it's the four SFE. cylinder. Yeah. It's the three SFE, um, two, the, the, uh, yeah, the two liter, which people argue with because there was the five SFE. It was the 2.2, but right. it did originally come with a two liter. Right. Um, but yeah, so yeah, five S didn't come out until like ninety one or ninety two, and the car was in ninety, I think. At least ninety. Mine was in the eighty eight. Okay, that's right. That's and an right. original, which is the first you know year, it was of the first month. I think those cars. If you look at the door, the uh, door sill, whatever, it was of the one of the first months that those cars were nice, you know, built. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of fun, fun build up of that. That was a fun car. It was cool. No it was lie. Really, really cool, and just like it, it showed me really. What you could do on a shoestring budget, what kind of cool vehicle you could build yeah. for not much. If you just, with a little know-how, some friends to guide you a little bit, yeah. and not being afraid of taking a car apart and putting it back together. Which is part of the thing is, you know, that was the first car that I really effectively took apart and put yeah. back together. Well, and I, mean, I remember you even built motor mounts for that car. Yeah, the hockey puck mounts. The hockey yeah. puck mount, And you, like, seriously, you legitimately, like, whittled it down with a uh-huh. pocket knife each no, puck. Well, one, the first one was just a knife just to get it in there. And then the other ones was just me with a, a Dremel for hours because I didn't have anything else to do. I was, you know, my wages were being garnished. I was longboarding to work, as people are sick of me talking about. <laughs> and I just I didn't have and everybody was gone out of the house at the time so I had nothing to do I just sat there with a Dremel for hours on end the out uh, the the pucks were a little too wide for the mounts so you just whittled a couple of millimeters off the outside and you have to put a little hole through the center and then the the biggest time sink though was just melting out the old mounts which Dave was there for yeah we lit that shit on fire and... well it just it wouldn't want to <laughs> stay lit. Yeah. So we're sitting there with every fluid we can get our hands on <laughs> and a couple we, of We floor emptied mats the entire garage just playing of amateur every, chemist. Yeah, of yeah. every flammable <laughs> fluid we could find. Dear God. And every and we had like We were literally playing my first chemistry set by play school. Yeah, and <laughs> and, and, and like welcome mats, because it was windy being the Salt Lake Valley. Yep. And we're sitting there putting like welcome mats around it, and then every WD forty PB blast, brake clean, carb clean, everything we could possibly get our hands uh, on. Yeah, honestly, just, I think if anybody like looked over the fence and had like no context of what we were doing, it was a hundred percent certain that we were making meth. 
Or anarchist cookbook. Yeah, absolutely. Terrorism. Yeah. Yeah. Something. yeah, we were making bombs, 100%. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so, and that, but that's part of the, that's one of the reasons why it's, you know, I'd get another one. That's, it was a fun experience altogether. The LS100 was cool, but it was f- cool to drive, and then the Lexota was fun to build. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a hard choice. I'm just going to say both. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to let you cop out. Uh, I'm going to cop out. Uh, okay. Longest I've ever owned. That, I a... think it's the Volvo. Is it really? It might potentially I thought you had the Civic the longer. The Civic I owned from 2009 to... It was jacked in 2010. No, no, I got the Civic in 2007. So it could have been the Civic. It's between the Civic and the Volvo. I mean, you've had the Volvo a couple years now. but I got it in the beginning of 2016. Okay. Sure. Maybe. No, it would have been the beginning of... Yeah, it probably would have been the beginning of 2016. So it probably would have been the Civic. I think the Civic I had for the longest amount of time total. Um with the Camry following fall close behind. Cause I didn't get rid of the Camry until the end of 2013. Right. Right. Or I should say Dave didn't take the Camry off my hands. I mean, until the end of 2013, that was when Cole and I hooked you up fat on the, the Lexus. And yeah, that was a big, hook you up were for sure. Y- and we had a little started. short on something or I don't remember what, but I gave you a few hundred bucks for the Camry. Yeah. He gave me a couple hundred bucks for the Camry. That was the agreement. And then, um, I was just going to make payments to Cole on the LS400. And then we had to, um, because the Camry, the engine kept seizing, I think is what it was, we had to pull start it with Cole's truck. Mm. So it was like we would put it into gear and it would absolutely seize. So we had to, we ended up having to hook it up to the back of Cole's truck and just tow start it. You couldn't pop the clutch just by rolling it down a hill. No. (laughs) Which was fucking amazing. So I'm sure the engine had some sort of seizing issue. It had to have. Whatever. But, I don't know. I'd love to get another one and actually treat it right. Yeah. Build another one of those. For sure. I, I see so much of the of the Lexota anytime I pop the hood on the, the all track that yeah. Mike and I have. Yeah. I look at this and I'm just like, <laughs> I could build my own side of this for this thing with hockey pucks. Yeah. Dude. Well, that's what's cool. <laughs> that's what's so cool about that era of uh, cheap Toyota car is that... I mean, it's a bloated camera, or it's a bloated Celica. You know what I mean? Yeah, it legitimately is. They're all the same The suspension's identical, everything. They're all the same car. They just look different, and they're all very easy to work on, and parts are plentiful. Yes. it's. I mean, if you're just starting out to work on a car, that's going to be the car you should probably get. Absolutely. I agree. Shut the fuck up. Buy a Camry. (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) You should not be looking at Outbacks and LS four thirties. You should go buy yourself an eighty eight Camry wagon. I mean, if you're just looking for like a shit box car to just tinker with, that's a great way to do it. Yeah, like anything of that era from like that era from Japan, because there are just so many things where it's like this is identical to this. It's oh. just they slapped a different body on it. Yep. Yeah. So, and I know like some of the. I think even a uh, one of the wheel hub assemblies that I bought for the Camry was off of a Celica. Hmm. Fairly certain you're correct. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So let's see. I should continue because we're probably using up a lot of time. Okay, so. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> longest you've ever owned the car you wish you never sold. I wish I didn't have to sell the LS400. Yeah. I really wish I didn't have to sell that car. Like, okay, so, I mean, it was on the downhill slope as a car, um, and it needed a lot more work than I had the time or patience to put into it. But... Had I not sold it, assuming I learned a lot of the lessons that I learned from that little financial kick in the nuts, I probably could have made it a really nice car. It so, wasn't too far off. Mm-mm. So, I mean, I really wish I didn't have to sell it. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, shit happens. Um, but I, I think that's the one that I wish I didn't have to sell. Most fun car you've ever owned. Q45. Uh, so far, I mean, just the couple of weeks I had to drive that car around. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's a fat bitch. Don't get me wrong, but, but it was pretty quick. Do she got a booty? She do. She, yeah, she do. She fucking do for real. <laughs> she fucks. She fucks. Okay. She will do. She'll get out of her own way. It's a pretty fun little car to have. That's a 300 horsepower, uh, VK, right? 
Uh, yeah, so yeah, they came with 340 horsepower. Oh, Jesus. Oh, damn. So, I didn't know they were up there. Which well. is funny because the LS400 or the LS430 came with 300. Yeah. So it's like it outpowered the 430, which is part of the reason why, you know, when Josh put it up, I'm like, yeah, if I can mm-hmm. afford that, I'd love, if I can afford it and keep it, you know, going, I would love to have that because it's, it's, like I said, I'm trying to make a quick car out of it. For sure. And that way you don't have to touch the engine, assuming you can keep it running properly. Yeah. You know, uh, it just a wonderful car to have, and it was a blast. And it sounds wonderful, you know. It's like you can't. It's it's the past. Every loud car I've ever had, you could drive it quietly. That you don't drive quietly. It's just all the time the VQ forty five wonderful sound that it makes. Yeah, brilliant, Perfect. brilliant, brilliant, fun car to drive. Yeah. Um, worst car you owned? Worst car I have owned. Uh, I'm gonna also say the Camry on that one. <laughs> during the winter I mean, with with the engine issues it had it was and i i really think i mean for you it was the starter thing with the supra because yeah. we had the same problem yeah and it ended up being a starter thing but you would be for 45 minutes click 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 until the end of time and you're i i would get calluses from having to crank it on my finger and thumb, which there's somebody listening to this right now. I should have just fixed it, but whatever. Yeah, uh, well, but like I would say it's 2020, jackass. Yeah, but I would get calluses on my fucking fingers from having to crank this thing for 45 minutes at a time every single morning. Can we be really honest, though, for a second? I think yeah. anybody listening to this podcast would probably do the same goddamn thing. Yeah. And then hindsight, two years later, would be like, I should have just fixed that. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, if if I, it's one of those if I knew then what I know now. But yeah, you know whatever. But yeah, I mean, it was the worst car by by far and away. When it did start, it was a funny, an awesome lopey rally car sound that it yeah. made. But it really sounded cool. <laughs> no lie, <laughs> it was great. But, <laughs> uh, sounded but, like anti lag with no turbo. Yeah. Right. You've got thirty grand. Uh, okay, so I've got thirty grand. I actually had to look this up to make sure I got the chassis code right because this is one of those things that, oh. you know, is fucking wrong. Uh, C33 Laurel import that import one of those. Ooh, Ooh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that a boy. Yeah, nice. One hundred percent. That's what I would do because um, I always default to Verasa, but then I had to remind myself I'm in America. Um, I mean, you know, and we hate foreigners. <laughs> so yeah, no, totally one hundred percent Laurel. Uh, favorite manufacturer. Uh, so far, I've had the best experience with Toyota. There's people who are going to argue with me. Once again, I don't care. Which um, is odd because you have a Honda tattoo. I do have a yeah. Honda tattoo. Which, I mean, whatever. <laughs> You're 18. You do weird things. Uh, it's all good. I mean, I do love Honda. I would love if I could own a Honda again. But I just don't trust the Valley. I don't, I don't blame you. trust the nope. U.S. I don't blame you at all. You know, uh but yeah, Toyota. Uh, least favorite manufacturer. I had an answer for this earlier. Um, Subaru, probably. And this is those things where I couldn't argue earlier when it was more, when you guys said it's more about the people who drive the Prius than yeah. it is the Prius. Okay, yeah. And I do like Subarus. I go through an annual I want an Impreza thing, but. That's usually after the first frost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's really just the people that fucking drive them in my wonderful high school experiences i'll, I'll go know. with that yeah yeah that'll that will do it for you uh favorite car in the world obviously verasa we're not going to get into that any more than we have to jzx 110 verasa uh the car you hate the most in the world subaru impreza okay we already know why the last <laughs> thing you purchase for a car is some bright blue uh NGK, sorry, I wanted to say KGB, but I knew that was not right. <laughs> uh, NGK uh, plug wires for the Volvo. It had an intermittent misfire I had to solve, so the IPD wires are no more, unfortunately. No. Because um, IPD, you make them way too fucking long. Could you shorten them up, please? <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, that's working now. And I'll be up in Utah County. Cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's... <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he came by. He brought us uh, brought us some presents. Um they're currently in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, I will say this, Luke. We appreciate that, but bringing, dropping off a 12-pack of nothing but IPAs, that's a real aggressive move. <laughs> that's real hard. <laughs> no, I, I think I think you need to keep doing that. I, I think that was that was A+. Plus. What kind no, of IPA is? I'm curious. There's a bunch of stuff that he got from a place that is not Utah. 
I like it. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm more. I curious. mean, Luke, Luke, I'm I'm loving your selection, like, honestly. Not. I mean, I I'm down for an IPA here and there, but I mean, that's uh, I can't drink several of them in a night anymore. <laughs> I'm an old man. Is it the oh. Alpha Centauri? Yeah. yeah there's. The, it, it, it's a bunch of Hop the Valley hop stuff. Hop Valley. Yeah. Can yeah. I? Can I partake? Yeah. yeah feel free to. He brought them for us, so yeah, you're you're an us. Alex, these bottle openers are the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah they're pretty awesome. I yeah. fucking love these bottle openers. Yeah, yeah, we we fucks with those hard. Alex oh, yeah. Crane, another Cam super fan. Yeah, shout out he's, to Alex. He's got the Boss three hundred two Laguna Seca. Yep. Riding in that Mustang while drunk was one of the greatest experiences of that Vegas trip. Driving that vehicle while sober was the one of the the best experiences of <laughs> <Yeah>. my Vegas <laughs> trip. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Not even gonna lie that 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 car that was a bucket list car for me. There you go. So oh, cool. I definitely it. check that one off. Yeah, it's a great car. Alex is a, a total dude. Like yeah. he's looking back to that night and fixing the brakes on the uh, Subaru. Uh, Dave, hey, is that an S fifteen? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's an S fifteen. Holy fuck, that's an S fifteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, SEMA in a nutshell. Thank you, yep. SEMA. When, when things show up in Spring Valley unannounced. Yep. While I'm putting brake pads on my car at an Airbnb. <laughs> uh, good times. <laughs> because Duralast makes subpar quality brake pads, but, and I had one delaminate, okay? <laughs> but they're built to last. We would not have had that moment if not for Duralast shoddy quality. Yeah. I mean, that That's is... That's a sentence I never thought I would utter in my life. That, uh, that is fair, Duralast. because we would have come out the next morning and been like, holy fuck, dudes, when did that S15 show up? Yeah. Is that an God S15? God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. And the dude wouldn't have showed up riding with his homies in a Tesla. Yeah. Oh, God, I know. You remember that? Like, we're all <laughs> Googling over the car, and he rolls up, rolls the window down in the back seat, like, hey, what's up, dudes? Yeah, we're, like, creeping on it, walking around the trailer, taking pictures really close to it, and he rolls up with his homies in the Tesla. Hey, guys, thanks for looking after it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No cool, problem. Cool. That's what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Not stealing an cooler. Quick, rub yeah. your dick on it as you run away. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn uh, what, <laughs> insert noise of flesh contacting metal panel here <laughs> that'll do <laughs> it's gonna have to uh, uh, anyway so wow my turn on the list uh, my first car a 1988 Acura Legend sedan you need another L. one I mean Maybe. <laughs> uh, last car I sold was the GTI. Yay! Yep. Uh, last car I bought was the GTI. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Yay! Oh. <laughs> no. Uh, favorite car that I've ever owned? That's kind of a toss-up between the Integra and the Supra. Oh, Ronda was a sweetheart, but she, I liked that Integra. That Integra was great. That was that car was just the little LS that could. I would just fuck with dudes in three series. I mean, we, Cottonwood Canyons. We all had some good times in both of those cars. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little partial to Rondel. Partial to Ronda. <laughs> Randall. Wow. Par, par, <laughs> partial to Rondel. Wow. Uh, God, I think I need more beer. Yes, you do. Hand <laughs> um, him an IPA. Yeah. I fuck, have yet to sip out of that one. Yeah. Time. There you go. Arigato, senor. No, I, I liked Ronda. Ronda, yeah, she, I mean, she, I, I, mean I, I, I was apparently a... a a godfather to Rhonda. Yes, you were. <laughs> she yeah. she was a she was a handsome young lass. Yeah, I mean, I did plenty of stuff to that car, but that Tegra was one of those like that was a car I had to get to used to driving a manual transmission with, you know, more often than not. You know, I have to deal with uh, jiggling the key in the ignition. <laughs> Jesus. Down, down and up quickly. Air, oh. oh, turn it. There oh. you go. Oh, is that the trick? Hey. You have to turn it. I uh, guess. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe okay. it just wears out in one spot. Who knows? There's but. a calamity going on in the background while Mike tries <laughs> to talk. There's just weirdness happening. It's all I right. Mean, I mean, Joey was basically mechanically masturbating in IPA. So. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that is a very... Jesus. Yeah. Mm. I love this shit. That is definitely an IPA. Yeah. I, Contains I, I, alcohol, you don't say. Uh-huh. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's either one of those two. Uh, today, I'll say Ronda, but tomorrow it could be the Integra. So that's fair. I just know that Huey Lewis in the News, the sports album. I can never listen to that album again. I, I yeah, I'm right there with you, dude. <laughs> I'm right there with you. 
Go on. The hot rock and roll is the beat. That's Dave? a good fucking song. What is your it problem? It really with that is. Song? Yeah, okay. it's a great song. But you, when you hear it constantly, like when you hear that whole fucking album on repeat from Idaho. Um, oh. So here's the deal, Cliff oh, yeah. Notes. The tape got stuck in the deck. Okay. Typical '80s Toyota electronics. The volume yeah. would not decrease. Okay. The Nor would volume the volume would increase, <laughs> and it would not stop. Playing, we, we would not eject. <laughs> we could not get it onto radio. We could not do anything. Side A in its entirety, click. Side B in its entirety, click. Side A in its entirety, click. Side B in its entirety. Pull up to the driveway. Was that mallet always stuck in the dr- or in the dashboard? <laughs> In the center to, stack? To add to the frustration, the clutch master cylinder died before I'd, we left the state. I'd heard about that. Yeah. And one of you was driving, the other was shifting. It was no. pretty much Mike's foray into rev matching. Yeah. It was the crash course. It was either either we die on this hill or we figure out how to get off of it. <laughs> and we figure out how to get off of it. Thank God that R154 is made out of fucking pig iron. Well, you know what's... Eight. What's hilarious is the weak link on those is the synchros, and that's what saved our asses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she she was a sweetheart. She was. I mean, ruined Huey Lewis for me, but she was a sweetheart. Really wish I didn't have to get rid of her. But, yeah, you know, that's okay. Scotty's buddies got her in good hands. Silent Cody or whatever his name is. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anywho. Anyway, uh, longest I've ever owned a car, it was however the hell long I owned the Subaru. Oh, the Outback, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't sell that God, thing. you had that thing for like six, seven years. Yeah, it was when I was still delivering pizzas, and I didn't sell it until last year. Yeah. So, yeah, that has been, God, I want to say damn near close to a decade of ownership of that thing. Every person you know has a memory in that car. Yeah. My favorite memory is we went to the, the U of U, because I said I was hungry, so you took me to a Starbucks in the U of U to have a baklava. Yeah, because my brother worked there, and it was in the middle of the night, and he would just hook us up. If you know the difference between baklava and a balaclava... Ding! <laughs> Congratulations, you are cultured. Yeah. And we were driving, I forget, exa- I think we were talking about Legos or something. Something. We were, just we were driving, driving back, but it was just a fun night. We were yeah. doing fuck all. Yeah. Just driving around in just, that Subaru. Just doing what you do. I just remembered that that... That drive shaft was so oh. horrendously unbalanced, and it would just turn into a massage at forty three and a half miles oh. an hour. Oh no! Like it wasn't that. It was because the uh, the, the guibo, the oh, rubber that in carrier that, bearing. Yeah, the rubber right. wore out, so the drive shaft was slapping the bottom of. That's right. So after a few days of futility with, uh, you know, Dustin Patton down mm-hmm. there at Nip and Tuck, and being unable to just find another one of those carrier bearings. We just said, fuck it. He got the softest silicone he could get, and just we piped it in there, and he's like, well, hope this works. And it did. It got the job done. It really did. It did. And then it, I mean, people make window weld motor mounts all the fucking time. Yeah. Why not a carrier bearing? Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it did turn the car into a massage chair at you know anything approaching freeway speeds, but, you know. I you know, my, was... my single, sorry, go ahead. No, go for it. Okay. I, had, I was a really stupid thing about the dog. My anyway. single greatest memory of the Outback was that one night where we were following all those street racers on the freeway. Oh, God. And I'm leaning out the passenger rear window. Yeah. With a boat oar. Yeah, like the boat oar that you brought. Yes, the boat oar that I had from my Volvo. Yeah. And we're rowing on these dudes yep. to try and get them to do freeway pulls. And they're not. And they weren't. So you took off and you slammed the hazard button and yelled at the top of your lungs, Yeah! Hammers, bitch! Uh, I I, I still can't breathe when I think about that. So many good times in that car. (laughs) Anytime I see somebody put their hazards on, I just think of you yelling at the top of your lungs, Hammers, bitch! That's okay. T-shirt. That's a T-shirt. Whoa. Hammer's bitch, <laughs> cam auto mag. Yeah, don't worry, we'll draw that up. And it needs to have the hazard symbol on it. Yes. Oh yeah, don't worry, it will. It will. Hammer's bitch. Oh man. Or like a hat. Yeah, flat bill cap. 
That's a flat bill cap I would wear. We'll I'd, I'd leave the sticker on that one. Absolutely. Oh, don't worry. We'll we'll get we'll get there. The merch will come. Yes, the merch will. Don't come. you worry. <laughs> but I, you know, honestly, I think a lot of that car is the reason why I now daily drive an Outback. That car is why Not I want another lie. one. <laughs> but I mean, it's like what? my Camry. Yeah, <laughs> I want another one. I don't want that one, but I do want another one. Exactly. <laughs> 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 you know, it's like. I, 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 I like you. Well, not you specifically, but someone like you. I like a person like you. <laughs> That's exactly where I'm at. That's... Oh, man. The mold you fit in? Can I get one of those? <laughs> well, so one of the cars that I've been looking at, it's another Outback. It's a newer one, but it has like 180,000 miles on it. My dad's like, That's a lot of miles. I'm like, I didn't have any problems until I hit like 220. I mean, I'm at 187.9 right now, but like yeah. my parts car's got 297 on it. Yeah, like, and the only reason it's a parts car is because of body damage. I mean, <laughs> and also the car I'm looking at is like a decade and change newer than my old one. So, yeah, you know, that's all right. Yep. So that just means the stereo will actually turn off. God, that was a <laughs> weird day, real weird day. That was an interesting one. Oh. We weren't sure what to do with that one. <laughs> no, that little JVC was fighting us every step of the way. <laughs> And we put a stock tape deck in it. It's still here. And a cup holder. Yeah. That worked. And the wood trim around the shifter. Oh, yeah, that's right. I pocketed the wood trim. Yeah. I remember that. I, the other day I, I found had... a GT Limited in the junkyard with wood trim, and I grabbed the console. <laughs> the oh. junkyard is a wonderful place. It that's, really it's is. It's my church, man. That's my religion. It's the fucking light of the flies. We need to do or whatever. The God, we need. Is. We need to just Lord run the around in a, Lord of the Flies. There you God, go. We need to man. run around in a junkyard with a GoPro and a microphone. That's really. Well, I was about to say that exact same thing. So harken back to the days of the Camry when I'm looking for Camry parts and I hear Jamal from the other side of the Camry or the other side of the junkyard. Joey, get over here! Oh God! Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Walk shit. over and it's a Canadian gauge cluster with. The gauge clusters and kilometers. Oh God, that's right. That went to like 260 clicks. I, still I have remember that. Gauge that. Yeah, I still good. Because I put the old one back what? in that Camry before I gave it to you. Yeah, and you remember the uh, the the Camry lip I got you that was mint. Right. That we ended up sheet metal screwing onto the Lexus bumper. It looked great. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, it did. I think for people listening that don't know the Lexota thing, yep. um, I built a. Uh, What's that chassis code? Anyway, it's an 88 Camry wagon, and I put an ES250 sedan nose on it. Front clip on it. Well, yeah. Not clip, but you know yeah. the, the whole nose. It was yeah. basically the clip. I mean, it basically. was head, headlights, fenders, hood, bumper. Just everything you see on the front. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm. People don't realize they're the same car. If you go no. onto Google and you look and you search ES250 nose, you might find my old build thread, and some of those images might still be hosted. It's a white wagon with a green front end. Yeah, it's almost green, black. Almost black. Yeah. It is. It's technically green. But you might be able to find an image or two. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Stealing your thunder, Michael. Derailing. All right. Uh, car wish I never sold. I really wish I never sold the Supra. Hmm. But that was more of a, I could not afford to keep fucking around with it as I was. That's a necessity. Yeah. You realize very quickly it's a very expensive hobby. Oh, yeah. And then you realize that owning a, a late model VW slightly out of warranty was also the same endeavor. I mean, it was just, it was the same endeavor except, like, they just cranked the difficulty. Yeah. You wanted to believe. That's it the was, important part. It was definitely <laughs> expert mode. God. <clears throat> you know, I just went from Harvest Moon to Dark Souls real quick. You died. God. Fuck. Damn. You died. You died, Cuphead. You died. God damn it. Uh, Just a lot of that. Uh, let's see. Um, where are we? Uh, most fun car ever owned? Um, it was the Integra. Just fucking with people in that damn thing. That car was fun. Yeah. It absolutely was a good car. I mean, a lot of E36 owners had no idea what was about to happen to them. But then there I would be. Yep. Yep. Uh, worst car I've ever owned. I mean, the GTI cost me the most money. And that was arguably a not the ideal Volkswagen ownership experience. Right. That was that. I mean, that's up there. I mean, the Subaru late in life was the arguably the worst thing that I've ever owned. <laughs> um, that's fair. I mean, yeah, 
Uh, truth be told, it probably was the GTI. Because that thing, <laughs> like, I mean, it was good when it was running, but really all that come up are just, oh dear God. All that come up are just uh, sadness and, you know. Sorry, we've gone on like a Power Wheels, a modded Power Wheels search. Jesus, there's a lot of... Like, I'm... I'm so down with that. There is just stuff going on in the background. Like, why is this a taboo subject? I will, I will for damn sure put underglow on a Hot Wheel Power Wheels. Damn right you will. I'll put a swamp cooler motor and an inverter in that bitch. <laughs> as long as it's one of the Liberty Walk Kids cars. Yeah, okay, I'm in. Yeah, there we go. I'm down with that. Uh, let's see. If I've got thirty grand, like I said, I'm building that uh, crazy first gen. CTSV. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, God, that's such a good... I love the CTSVs. Me too. Just hard dick for CTSV. Dude, I'd be fucking all about one, but, you know... <laughs> Here comes my life, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my fucking life. Uh, uh, turn left, bro. Well, turn left. We have There's, gone from... Uh, this is where you need a stance, kid. Yeah, we've gone from Chef in My Fridge to uh, the first episode of Season 2 of the Grand Tour, and we're watching Jeremy Clarkson struggle to get that Lamborghini off that dirt road and onto uh, the paved road. That was painful. That really was. Um, let's see. Favorite manufacturer? Um, I mean, it's either... Honda. I mean, it's either Honda... Volkswagen. Oh. No. <laughs> it's either Honda, Toyota, or Subaru. Just cause... Gee, I can only imagine why. Those are literally all the vehicles you've owned, save for a Volkswagen. Yeah. <laughs> They're the only ones that have like not that I have not looked back upon and been like, this might have been a bad idea. So, um, yeah, I'll go with Honda. I liked Honda. I mean, that's why I kept looking at Hondas. So My right you... arm thanks you. That's great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Somebody uh, loves it, finally. Uh, least favorite manufacturer... I mean, really, anybody German, because that's just, like... Spitting fire. I mean, you've been burned, so that's understandable. Well, it's also one of those things that's, like... If you gave me, like, a 2012, like, Civic Si or a WRX or whatever, I could do stuff to it. But that GTI, it was, like, I had to get specialty tools and... That is true. Like, there was just a bunch of stuff. Like, it was just so aggressive. It's like, this is supposed to be an enthusiast car. This is supposed to be mm-hmm. something I could do stuff to. Right. But... I shouldn't have to plug this thing into a computer to tell it to retract brake calipers so I can change pads. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you know. should be able to be a car enthusiast, not a Volkswagen enthusiast. Yeah, like, I don't... To own the yeah, car. that's definitely... I went to school. That's a good way to put that. I right. went to school for journalism, not engineering. So <laughs> clearly, like I am not the target market for these enthusiast German vehicles. Air quotes. Air quotes. Air quotes. So well, and it's funny because I mean, you go to SoCal, and a lot of the Volkswagen community are the stance kids. Yeah, they don't give a shit about the turbo. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, but they don't. As no. much as I like those guys, like they've been good to me, but it's but they'd be doing just fine if it was a Golf, not a GTI. Right. You know. So, oh, let's see. Uh, favorite car in the world? Favorite car, pause, in the world. Um, <laughs> man, that's, uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Joey's looking at my uh, SDF Macross collection. Don't worry, I am listening. But Good. I just thought I would. Check I'm just this out. no, no, no. I'm painting a picture for the view for the listeners. <laughs> yeah. So for the listener at home, I have uh, Macross Plus. I have the entire. Cl- I have Ooh. all of Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Yeah, yes. Char's Counterattack on uh, DVD. I've got a uh, Akira it, so, on both DVD <clears throat> and Blu-ray. So I still can't a... watch the end of Akira. Really? Where the dude fucking starts mutating. Uh, just horrifies me. I can't do it. I just can't watch it. it. No, it's not the best part of the movie. The best but, part I mean, of the I'm going to have to agree with you. That's the best part of the movie. No. Well, <laughs> the tits are definitely the second best part. The tits are definitely the second best part. Are. <clears throat> I'll go with that. Nice. <gasps> oh, Votomes. Yeah. Oh, Votomes. Yeah. Joey's looking through... Yeah, that's... Uh, I'll not move that around too much. That's why I haven't them. opened it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is probably it. a real good opportunity for me to tell you guys that I have the original Robotech Macross Saga on VHS. Damn. Is it Robotech or Macross? Well, so 
it's, because because Robotech is kind of Macross. Well, so in the U.S., it was well, marketed. As it was marketed Robotech, as both. the Macross saga. Yeah, yeah. I just bought the Xbox release of the Robotech game. Damn, yo, Battle Cry. Hell yeah, yo. With me. That and Silent cool. Hill too, because I had Damn. to buy one well, get I mean, free over. Of course. Uh, like you do, though. Because it's I mean, fucking Silent Hill and I'm a pussy. <laughs> because you can just walk outside Fuck. and have that shit happen. <laughs> yeah, holy pretty shit. Much. Like, yeah. oof, what up, Salt Lake? It's pretty brutal right now. Um, yeah, so let's see. Where the hell did I get to? Uh, favorite car in the world? Um, pause. Yeah, favorite car, pause, in the world. Hamilton, you, or Hammond, you idiot. Um, <laughs> man. That's exactly how that should have been played. No, you know what? Um... Yeah, I want to say it's that DC two four chassis Integra. Oh, just the DC chassis Integra. Yeah. Well, okay. so well, well I mean, that is the best handling front wheel drive car ever made. Well, like, well I got to right. say two four because remember the RSX is DC five. Fair. Yeah. So, so I got the original DC. Yeah. The the other first the ninety four to oh one DC chassis. Gotcha. Yes. I mean it was. Yeah. It was light. You could do, like, I could do whatever to it. Like, give me a 10 millimeter wrench and then, you know. Yeah, you could take apart three quarters of that car with a 10 mil. Yeah. Uh, 10, 12, 14 and a catalog. Yeah. yeah. T- 10, 12, 14, 17 catalog. Yeah. Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber mallet. And there you go. I mean, that's how I built my Integra. I mean, that's, I, I would really like to get another one of those just as some sort, as another project. But, you know, that's got to get a. Got to get some other stuff in my life figured out first. The problem is when somebody else decides they want it as their pro- project. Yeah, that's or they why they want it as the the culmination of its parts. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I'm, uh, you know, ne- next step after uh, you know this phase of my life is find a house with yes. a garage. Yes, and of course, then, and then do what Abe did and just you know cover the place with cameras. Of course. Mm. Yep. I mean, and in this day and age, gun. we have to. I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, a gun's not going to help me if somebody steals my car while I'm deep in the throes of slumber. I'm referencing Abe on this one. And then buy a gun. Okay. <laughs> I mean. I'll just settle for his kitchen. God, that is he has, true. He has a goddamn amazing kitchen. Yes. Well, and just he just cooks. Well, a- cooks. Abe is just an amazing bearded masterpiece to begin yeah. with, but... <sighs> Well, I, I, I called him full of shit on the hopes that he would cook me something to prove himself, and he's yet to do that. But he has cooked for me, and God damn it, I know, exquisite. that's what I want him to do. I want some of that awesome cooking. We'll just <laughs> show up at his house one day and just demand him cook for us. And he'll post, like, these big 30-pound hunks of just meat. Yeah. Okay, well, here's the deal, Abe. We're coming for you, and we're going to record a podcast over food at your house. Yeah. Fuck yeah. it, I got 50 bucks on it. I don't even give a shit. Write that shit down. Yeah. <laughs> Abe, we're coming for you. We're we'll coming, figure buddy. out the logistics later, but we're we'll coming get there. for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, the car that I most hate? Probably your GTI. I didn't hate, like... <laughs> it was I don't, cool. It was a super cool car. Like, it was just, I mean, I bought this thing that was five years old at the time, and then, you know, I knew that there were problems with that particular car, you know? But I just figured that they wouldn't all hit me within a calendar year. Right. So, you know, I didn't figure I'd get the entire pain in the ass Volkswagen ownership experience. You got the and definitely condensed version of that. Yeah. Yeah, I got the that was That was the TLDR open your account <laughs> and, and pour it in here. Fuck. Yeah, that was... <clears throat> I mean, that was just painful, but I mean, I wouldn't say I hate that damn Keep thing. Keep your arms in the vehicle at all times. <laughs> <laughs> you are about to be taken on a ride. Doors locked. Um, That's just the sound of you signing the lease in the background is click, 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 as you're going up the roller coaster ramp. Oh, boy. And then as soon as you're driving off the lot, it's that brief moment of free fall before you drop. Yay! (laughs) You're like, oh my god, what have I done? (laughs) I mean, that was about the size of it. Um, Yeah. uh, I mean, I don't like a lot of these uh, 
bigger than a crossover, smaller than like mid-size, you know, SUV. Kind of like the weird small SUV that just keeps getting bigger and more bloated and is driven by people who are either way too impatient or have all the time in the world. Gotcha. You know? It's not really a car. Or not really, yeah, not a car, more of a segment. Um, I'll go with that. Yeah. And the last thing I purchased for a car, uh, I, I put gas in my dad's Altima, in the Altima. Word. Yeah. So. 2.5 SDs, like what? Yep. Is that a car of cloth interior? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Dude, that thing was a former Enterprise rental car. Oh, God, it's still got the barcode on the, on the window, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, man, I bet you can probably get free car washes or parking. I don't really. That, that thing is due up for some for some loving. <laughs> some loving that I cannot possibly provide it, despite my mechanical knowledge. So, uh, well, at least it's not a V6. It doesn't have timing chain guide issues. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, there is that. And then real quick, I'm going to head over to Facebook and see if I can pull up who all... So, the contest, if you remember... Yeah, we were actually going to try and give some shit away. So, yeah. Uh, for, you know, this week and then the next three weeks, we're giving away a grab bag full of stuff. That includes uh, shirts from our friends at Us uh, Against One Clothing and some stuff that I want at Pub, at, uh, pub Trivia. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff from SEMA, including signed posters and other stuff. I've got a pile of Hot Wheels that I need to uh, trim down. To a more appropriate level, because uh, I need more room to put uh, my gunpla. <laughs> Bless you. That's priorities, a, mate. Priorities. That's a real problem. Yep. yep. That needs addressed. So, let's see if I can just sort this out. Mecca or cars, mecca every time. Yep. I mean, cars are mecca. So. Kinda. Kinda, but I do, you know, when asked, cars or mecca, if you were to get rid of cars and just give me giant robots... I yeah. would take giant robots 100% of the time. Giant robots. Fuck with me. Fight me. Oh, well, it's, yeah. it's it's like uh, pi- pirates or cowboys. Pirates or cowboys? Yeah, pirates, pirates or cowboys. We'll have to go pirates on that one, I think. Okay. All right. Mecha or cars. It's mecha. Definitely mecha. Yeah. Yeah. Mecha is Ninja pirates. or pirates. I'm going to have to go. Oh, no. It was pirates or ninjas. That's what it was. Pirates well, I or always ninjas. Heard, I always heard pirates or ninjas. That's the one. I fucked up. It's okay, Dave. It's okay. We still have okay. you and your dusty ass. Dude, could I build granite countertops for a living? I'm covered in this shit. Still need to give you shit for being dusty. That's okay. <laughs> we need to get some lotion on that shit. <laughs> God. All right. So. I'm so ashy, I'm waterproof. Ashy, motherfucker. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. So. Uh, how many people shared this? So, uh, aside from. Me sharing it three times. Okay, well that that's a given. One, two, three, four. Three and a half. Three and a half. Doesn't count. It doesn't count. So the last three don't count. So because one of them is me and one 3. of them is 1, Luke. Four. Pie. All right. Is it, is it is it time for pie? Uh, well, you can't have any pie without cool whip. Cool whip. All right. You're eating What's hair. <laughs> How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? If you don't eat your meat, you can't have any pudding! As Michael is visibly annoyed. <laughs> no, I want to make a reference that's just not going to make any sense to you A guys. reference that's so stretchy, you don't have to Google it. <laughs> you just have no, to he's, listen- he's Googling a random number generator. No, you just have to uh, listen to uh, a certain podcast to understand the... Uh, is, is this the shout out to All Fantasy Everything? Uh, no, it's actually a shout out to uh, Beyond Yacht Rock. Oh yeah, that's a good one because they did a they did a genre called song puddings. Oh, and all of the bumpers were like a minute and a half long. They were all clips from the Great British Baking Show, and they all started <laughs> off with somebody saying, "I am the queen of puddings." <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, Britain. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So I we have three people who are currently in the running. Okay. I'm sorry, Luke, you don't count, neither does Dave. Well, duh. And obviously I don't. Of course. So we've got three people in the running. I have found a number, a random number generator. So I have dialed it up to one through nine. 
And depending on which number pops up, that's going to... Okay. Be, yeah, so... Okay, so thirds. Yep, so okay, in thirds. Cool. All, All right. right. Let's see it. Generate. Seven. Oh, so that means... Mr. Matt Barker. Matt Congratulations. Barker is the winner. You have won a grab bag of shit. <laughs> These lunatics brighten my day once again. Yep. Daw. Feeling the love Duh, over here. Aw, buddy. I am totally feeling the love. Thanks, yeah. Matt. So, yeah, there you go. Congratulations, Matt. You have won. Boom. Uh, we don't exactly know what you've won yet. Yeah, we'll figure it out, but I mean, it's going to be in a big-ass bag. We're going to throw a bunch of shit in a box, and we're going to send it to you. <laughs> or deliver it, whatever the case may be. I mean, be. we'll hand-deliver it. It's cool. You know. Hit us up. Uh, yeah. Hit us up on one of our social medias, at yeah. Cam Automag. Or, or mailbag at Cam Automag. Or, you know, however you feel like getting a hold of us, Matt. I mean, you're probably friends with all of us on Facebook. I mean, I'm not friends with this guy, but I should be. You really should be. Matt's terribly interesting dude. Well, I mean, he wants to put a 180 in everything. Yeah, he's I have a 180 in something, so... He's currently trying to put a 180 in everything. I like it. I think he had a TDI Corrado. Yo. Oh, yeah, why aren't some, we friends, dude? Some insanity like that, but oh, anyway. Jesus, fuck. Uh, I guess yeah. that's weird. Like, what generation TDI? <laughs> I have no idea. Ballpark. I'm guessing it's a 1.9, like the like, Mark III, Mark IV. Yeah, oh. I just saw it, like, in his... You know, he shared one of those memory things. It's probably it's an like, ALH. Oh, shit. All right. You so, are. I have a fucking sunroof for a Corrado if you want to buy that. Uh, oh, shit. You still, still have that? I still have it. It has the, that has the uh, cloth. God damn. Roof. Jeez, I thought that shit got uh, thrown away ages no, ago. No, because I know, like, I, can, I, know I can get money for that. So, fuck that. It's a V-dub part. <laughs> damn. So, fuck you. I'm getting money. Yeah. God, I, I, might, I might just buy that off of you. Yeah. Oh, feel free. I need the money. All righty. So, yeah, Matt, congratulations. You've won. Hell, uh, Yeah. Other guys who entered, uh, Alex and Scott, try again next week. You're, you know, and everybody else who's listening, who's come this far, good. Congratulations. <laughs> More power to you. You've won enlightenment and a ticket to heaven. Don't squander it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, the contest runs for uh, another, another three, three weeks. weeks. All you got to do is just share the podcast post and voila. You're entered to win a grab bag full of stuff. And then at the end of the uh, three weeks, when we have four winners... One of you is going to win a spot up here in the office. So, don't worry, Luke. You're already guaranteed a spot on the couch. Yeah, we're gonna get we you just in here. Have to point. figure this out. Yeah, we'll we'll get you in here, Luke. Don't worry about it. So, yeah. So everybody else, yeah, just uh, like, share, and mention us. You know, and uh, yeah, voila, you're entered to win. Perfect. So, you know, I think it's time to. Uh, Bring what's left of this into port. This flaming, barely floating barge. It's certainly on fire harbor. at this it's, point. It's absolutely we've, we've on set fire. it aflame. Yes, Stop we have. blowing holes in my ship. <laughs> I'm always in for a Pirates of the Caribbean reference. Who isn't? Mm. Uh, yeah, so thank you for joining. Us. Where's the rum gone? Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Camcast. Uh, you can follow us on all of our various social medias: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Seldom use Snapchat. Hmm. It's still there. It is there. Uh, find us on Google Play, Apple Podcasts, now Spotify. Yeah, we're hell, everywhere, baby. Wherever the hell else you find your podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're on those various places, please feel free to uh, rate and review us. We will do the same thing if you tell us that you have a podcast. Yeah. Rate, review, subscribe. Yeah. Let us know. We'll totally. Hell, you know, hit us up. Let us know what other podcasts you listen to. Hell, we'll totally rate and review your podcast. Absolutely. <laughs> Gladly. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, check out our YouTube page. There's plenty of stuff there. We've got some, uh, you know, hopefully some stuff coming up. Some holiday-themed things and shenaniganry. Shenaniganry. We test drive Santa's sleigh. Damn, I wish. God, right. Can, can it be the Santa sleigh that's in the Mercedes commercial every year? Oh, I wish. Because anyway. I think last year it was a C63S. Uh, Is that this what year it's an SLS. It was red. I remember that. Uh, this year it's uh, an SLS or just an AMG GT. Of course it is. Yep. So anyway, I mean, we'll take it. Exactly. We're not. We're not picky. So, yeah. Uh, click the links at the bottom of this uh, post. Buy a T-shirt. Really helps us out. Buy anything. Yeah. Helps us out. Yeah. Rep our shit. Yeah. Because it's your Support shit too. Support local. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh -huh. super shout out to our sponsor. Oh yeah. Steady Broke. Yeah. Steady Broke. Our buddy Tommy started this company. Steady Broke Clothing. 
Uh, yeah, head over there. Use Cam Auto fifteen. I think that's still the active coupon code. Or it should be for another couple days. Yeah, uh, yeah. Use Cam Auto fifteen. Get fifteen percent off your entire order. So yeah, go get you some broke AF shirts. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to Tommy for uh, sponsoring this podcast. Steady broke clothing. Super sponsorship. Yeah. Go get you some shit. Get you a Cam Auto Mag sweatshirt, a Steady Broke T shirt, and maybe a Cam Auto Mag hat. No, I don't know. Does Steady Broke have a hat? Uh, probably. I bet I they know. do. Somebody's got. Tommy a hat. likes hats. I bet they got hats. Somebody's got to have a hat. Get, Dad, a nice, get some cool shit. Tis the season to look fly as fuck. All yeah. right. Dad says if you spend all that money, he might come back. <laughs> he <Damn>. won't though. <laughs> we all know he won't. No, we want to try anyway. <laughs> Dad's be too busy being a real dad. Yeah. That's okay though. We heart your pizza, Dad. Yup. Uh, we, we know you'll come back for us eventually. We may have already graduated college by the time that happens, but whatever. damn it, you're coming back for us, and we know it, and we have faith. Yup. <laughs> he won't look at us as a mistake if we do all that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> love us, Dad. Love us. Please. <laughs> as we start slowly fading in the cats right. in the cradle and the silver spoon in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be back next week ladies and gentlemen hopefully with the uh the regular cast and crew if not i'm sure we can bring joey off the bench again you got a couple more weeks of me left hell Yay. yeah <laughs> all right everybody okay good night everyone good night love you long time so it's a cool whip or cool whip and the cool whip and the cool whip with the silver spoon <laughs>